Western Michigan wearing the white uniforms tonight. And Mizzou, the black tops, gold pants, black helmets. And they're ready to begin their 2016 home season. Alex Ross back deep to receive this kickoff from Brendan Ranius. And through the end zone for a touchback. Let's take a look at tonight's starting lineups presented by Hardy's on the defensive side for the Eastern Michigan Eagles. Yeah, and the guy you need to really look out for, number 52, Pat O'Connor. Led the Mid-American Conference in sacks in 2014. Missed last year with sh uh, shoulder surgery, but he's back at it. Had two sacks last week in the opener. He will present problems for Missouri. Eastern Michigan, a winner in week one. Last week at home over Mississippi Valley State, 61 to 14. Point a minute outfit we got looking at. And Drew Locke ready to kick start this Tigers offense. Takes the handoff to Ish Witter. Demetrius Mason running right, turning the corner, and he runs for about 10 yards on first down before he's caught by Juan Geraldo. Interesting, they start out with a little razzle-dazzle on the deal and kind of puts the Eastern Michigan defense on their heels to start. Play number two, winner keeps. It was second and short, so he runs for the first down up near the 39. Geraldo again with a tackle for EMU. 100 plays run by Mizzou last week, Ray. Really 106 when you take into account the plays that the had penalties. penalties. Yeah. They were taken off the board. Fastest offense in the country last week. Lock rolling out now under pressure, just throws it out of bounds. Ike Spearman was there pressuring the Tigers quarterback. And great coverage on the outside. Daquan Pace, the senior corner, number one for Eastern Michigan. Their top cover guy, he was all over that one. Set up the screen pass, Jonathan Johnson. Comes to the sideline, steps out of bounds at about the 45. This is just a quick bubble screen to the outside, a little fake there. And then it's all about the blocking on the edge. And you had a nice job there by Jason Reese, the tight end, to create some room. Lock on third down, finds the open man, complete at midfield. And right near midfield is Ish Witter, close to the marker. Kyle Rock, Rockwall, the leading tackler from last week, inside linebacker for Eastern Michigan, made the hit, but not quite soon enough. They're going to move the chains. Yeah, team high 10 tackles for Rockwall. How about that name, though, Rockwall? So that's a pretty good name yeah. for a linebacker. Yes. First down, Tigers from midfield. Locked to throw again. Finds a man wide open at the 40-yard line. Again, it's Jonathan Johnson fighting off tacklers, and he has a first down to the 36-yard line of EMU. A gain of 14. And they are giving him a lot of respect. Vince Calhoun, the, the man in coverage, you hardly even see him in your screen. He was backpedaling, expecting a deep shot. Taking a shot here. Got it. Ray Wingo for Emmanuel Hall. Touchdown, Tigers. Now the 6-3 sophomore Hall got it. Step or two on the defender, and the Tigers quickly march down the field and score on their first possession. Started out with great protection, giving Drew Locke time to lock in on Emmanuel. That's something they, they're in a little uh, swinging gate here. It looks like the false alarm. But that's something they've talked about to us and, and throughout the offseason, competing and completing passes down the field. And that was a perfect strike from Locke. And this is... Turner Davis doing the place kicking. Tucker McCann, the freshman, kicked last week. And this is Adams, junior out of Springfield, Missouri, who knocks home the extra point to make it 7-0. This is how you start a ball game, your home opener. Perfect throw down the field. Locke hooks up with Hall. And Mizzou jumps out to a 7-zip lead. SEC Saturday Night is brought to you by AT&T, mobilizing your world.
Tigers score quickly on their first possession. Seven plays, 75 yards, 36-yard touchdown catch to Emmanuel Hall. Ray, how did he get so open? Well, it's the first time they pressed up here on the top side. That's Ross Williams working on Emmanuel Hall, and Hall just blows right past it. And that, that was an easy call. I believe that was an audible from Drew Locke, seeing the press coverage and checking to the fade. First touchdown catch for Emmanuel Hall in his collegiate career. 7-0 Tigers, EMU ready to get the football for the first time. Shaq Bantam, Blake Bantam back deep. Comes to the near side, and Bantam's going to let it bounce in the end zone for a touchback. Well, we mentioned that Brogan Roback suspended on August 23rd for conduct detrimental to the team, an indefinite suspension. That has given Todd Porter the backup a chance to start. And he did a great job last week in the opener. I thought he showed great poise, command of the offense. Uh, he heated up as the game went on. He started throwing the ball down the field and had success. I mean, they ran up 61 points. Quarterback did a pretty nice job. Three touchdown passes, one pick. 15 to 22 for 171 yards against Mississippi Valley State. Jack Van in the backfield. They stack two receivers to each side. Porter keeps it on the first play and slides down for a five-yard gain. And right away, we see an improvement from Todd Porter from right. game one to game two. Last week, every time he ran the football, he got crushed at the end of it. I'm sure that that slide was something he worked on all week, and he did it to perfection. Gain of five, didn't get hit. Three play. Mizzou jumps off that right edge. Like Charles Harris, who jumped early. Now, Harris only had two tackles in the loss at West Virginia. Pretty deceiving, though, numbers. He had a better game than that, did he? He did. I thought he was very disruptive. His inside move blew up several running plays. Uh, he was admittedly, and then, you know, Coach told us that he was. Coach Damani Cross told us. Outside, defense, number 95, five yard penalty, remains second down that he might have been trying to do too much. I think they got the wrong number. They tried to blame it on Ricky Hatley. It was definitely Harris uh, on the top there. But he's a force to reckon with. The Eastern will have to figure out a way. They may have to chip in, put a tight end over there. Uh, they're going to have to keep their eye on number 91. Second down and short, less than a yard. Eastern Michigan ran a quick tempo offense against Mississippi Valley State. We expect to see a little different one tonight. And there's another time that Harris jumps, so a free play, but they keep it on the ground and run for the first down. But that's two straight plays that the cadence of Todd Porter has gotten Charles Harris to jump off sides. Well, you watch what happens. Well, it happened a little late there, but what happened was the center lifts his head up, and that movement triggered Harris. Now, I know he's wired as you can be on the home opener and all those things, but he's got to watch the ball, not the center's head. Watch the head pop up. That, that little uh, out of his peripheral vision, he saw that movement, and that triggered him. He's got to watch the football. Eastern Michigan has a first down at their own 44. Ian Erickson now comes in as the back, even though Shaq Van the starter in running back, yet to get a carry. These guys are interchangeable. Uh, Erickson's like a human pinball out there. He bounces off people like nobody I've seen. Here except, is Erickson. Except, of course, for that time. Well, he had an outstanding game last week in the opener. 12 attempts, 97 yards. So he had an 8.1 yard per carry average last week. Yeah, and they really, they switched him by quarters pretty much last week. He didn't see the field until the second quarter. But he played most of that quarter. Two rushing touchdowns last week for Erickson. No gain on that last play, so it's second down and 10 for Easter. Late substitution. And they check out Sergio Bailey late. Fake the jet sweep to Doherty, and the pass is too low, but they had the man open. But it underthrew Sam Browning. Yeah, and the pressure is what got to him. Of course, it forced the underthrow. Bring up a third down. There's head coach for Eastern Michigan, Chris Creighton, in his third season. It was a missed opportunity right there. He had a wide open receiver. The Missouri Blitz proved to be effective. It was Marcel Frazier who had the pressure. 
last week EMU five for 11 on third down. Porter lets it go caught by Newplow first down EMU at the Mizzou 44 and he caught that against cornerback Arian Pitney who had a great game against West Virginia last week. Outstanding use of the hands by Newplow and he Newplow sets up right at the top of your screen. First down EMU handoff Erickson bounces off one tackler and is able to advance to the Tigers 41 where Michael Shear wraps him up. Erickson, a redshirt sophomore from Clarkston, Michigan. Yeah, interested to see what Central, or excuse me, Eastern Michigan does with their tempo. I think they want to go slow, and that's why they're doing these late substitutions. They want to eat up as much of this play clock as they can, even though kind of make it look like they're going fast, which is what they've done on this drive. Bring in their fullback, Levante Robinson, for the first time. Fake the jet sweep and the direct snap. Erickson tackled by Donovan Newsom. Gain of about three to the 39. Nice play for Newsom of fighting his way through the traffic and catching Erickson from behind. This is a third down and five. Corners are pressed. Let's see if Eastern responds with a fade route to the outside. Porter, first down. Run after the catch by Doherty. Eddie Doherty, a sophomore who was Eastern Michigan's only 500 plus yard receiver a year ago at 557 receiving yards. Yeah, a little basically uh, a pick route, if that's what you want to call it. But he was outside, came in underneath the defense, and of course the safety got there a little late. Here's what I'm talking about with them taking the time. Offense from 85. 15 yard penalty from the previous spot. Remains third down. Wow, the flag came in kind of quietly. So that's going to erase the first down catch for Doherty. All right, well, I called it a big play, and so did the officials. <laughs> and you, you know, they, offenses like to call it a rub. Defensive guys, we call it a pick. A pick is illegal. So that's going to mark it all the way back at the EMU 45 yard line. They had a third and five. Now it's third down and 20. And that's the kind of thing Eastern cannot do. They can't shoot themselves in the foot like that. Porter, quick strike, but off the body of Dan Bushman, incomplete, and it's fourth down. Those are the kind of things uh, are, that are drive killers, those mistakes. And then they had some nice pressure up the middle as Terry Beckner Jr., who gets a hit on the quarterback late, coming off of an injury from uh, in spring, is doing a heck of a job, and they, they say he keeps getting better every week. Yeah, last year, right ACL surgery after getting hurt at the BYU game. November 14th. Somewhat limited in week one last week of West Virginia. They expect him to see more snaps tonight. Looked pretty, looked pretty good on that one, Mark. Yes, Jonathan Johnson back to receive the punt. Toward the sideline, and that's going to roll all the way into the Tigers' end zone. Well, EMU is rolling, but a costly penalty stopped that drive, and now we get another flag here on the punt. Legs down near the where the line of scrimmage is on the eastern sideline near the 50 yard line. James Carter, our referee tonight. Johnny, what's that number? Johnny, what's the number? <laughs> Johnny, what's that number? <laughs> During the kick, personal foul, face mask, number four of the receiving team. That penalty will be half the distance from the goal. 
First down, Missouri. So that's called on Brandon Lee. So that personal foul goes against the Tigers. Mizzou ball when we come back to Columbia. Back here at Columbia, Mizzou leading Eastern Michigan 7 0 on that punt. We saw the personal foul, Ray. Right face there, mask. Brandon Lee. You're going to see him grab the face mask, and that's the call that was made right there. So, Mizzou, <laughs> instead of starting at their own 20, will begin at their own 10 yard line. Half the distance to the goal. Quick pass out to Kendall Blanton. Tigers tied in for five yards on first down. Well, that shows you the confidence Josh Heupel has in Drew Locke to come out in the shadow of their own end zone and throw the football right away. Another quick strike right back to Blanton. He's right near the marker at the 20. And Geraldo, another tackle for EMU. That was an RPO, a run pass option, where the line blocks run. The back thinks he's getting the football, but the quarterback will make the decision post snap that he's going to throw that bubble screen out there. You see Locke's numbers early on. Pretty good stuff, four or fives thus far. It was under 50% last week. They spotted just short of the 20 so it's third and about half the length of the football for a first down. And they'll probably sneak it. And indeed that's what Drew Locke will do. Looks like he has enough to move the chains for a Mizzou first down. Sometimes that could be a scary proposition when you mainly go uh, in the shotgun and then you have to go up under center and take a snap in a critical third down situation. I've seen a lot of those balls on the ground. They did a nice job executing between Bailey the center and Locke the quarterback. Sam Bailey, the center this year, taking a deep shot. Trying to get Hall, Hall again. again. Yeah, but a flag is down. And Hall, he threw his hands up wanting a call and didn't finish the down. I don't necessarily care for that, but he did get grabbed. This might just be holding rather than pass interference. Jalen Felding, defense number 12, 10 yard penalty, automatic first down. Jalen Phelps, a true freshman, getting a rep up there at the corner position, and he got beat off the line by Hall, and he had to grab her. It was goodbye. First down, Mizzou from the 30, a handoff Ross. Vince Calhoun and others for EMU come up to stop him for just a gain of a yard, yard and a half. Alex Ross last week at West Virginia, 18 carries for 67 yards. Mizzou really didn't get that ground game going consistently in Morgantown last week. Ross going out to the edge. He is undercut by Geraldo. Boy, number 32 on Geraldo has been everywhere so far early in this game defensively for EMU. Yeah, he actually was a backup last week and then came in and, and played really well against the game against Mississippi Valley State and earned the starting job this week. Now the numbers on Ross, who's a graduate transfer from Oklahoma, played the last three seasons for the Sooners. Deflected, batted down. O'Connor. Was that Max Crosby that time? You know what? I think you're right. It was There's Crosby. still a lot of hair coming out from under the helmet, so it can be <laughs> difficult. But it was blonde. That's what <laughs> threw me off. But they will rotate those defensive ends across the board. Eastern Michigan will. Pat O'Connor, Jeremiah Harris, and then Max Crosby. And Crosby, the redshirt freshman, makes a big play on third down to force his punt. So Corey Fatoni on to punt for Mizzou last week at West Virginia. He had eight punts, averaged. 39 yards per punt. Here's his first punt of the night. He's going to get it away. Yep. And it lets it bounce. And it takes a Mizzou roll all the way down to the 21 yard line. Well, the SEC ESPN Network grants you an all access pass to Gator football for their second game of the season against Kentucky. You'll get never before seen footage and sounds from pregame to postgame. SEC inside Kentucky versus Florida. At 7 Eastern on Wednesday, and it also streams live on the ESPN app and watch ESPN. 
not to play spoiler, but Florida whacked Kentucky pretty good today. But you get an inside look on Wednesday. Eastern Michigan, only one win last year, only one win in 2014. They were winless in conference a year ago, so they already have matched their win total from last year. They were so decimated with injury last year. Coach Creighton was, <laughs> he threw his hands up in the air. What are you going to do? But a lot of those guys came back, and they're a much better football team this year. Sergio Bailey with the reception. There's the head coach, Chris Creighton, in his third season. Guys who is in his 20th season as a head coach. Spent some time with Drake in Des Moines, also at Wabash College and Ottawa University in Kansas. And he inherited a, a losing tradition at Eastern Michigan, something he's fighting hard every day to overcome. First down, Eagles, number 36. Bouncing around across the 40. It was Erickson before he stopped by the safety, Thomas Wilson. A little power run. They pulled the guard around and lead that H back up into the hole. A nice execution, nice little pickup on first down for Eastern Michigan. They go to empty three receivers to the left. Missouri showing that they're going to bring the heat. And they have a tight end, a 6-7 tight end, Nigel Kilby in the slot there. Here's Kilby right here. He was outstanding last week in nine plays, caught four balls. Bantam motions into the backfield pre-snap. Porter looking Kilby's way, throws and has him. First down catch at the 48 of Mizzou. Now they're saying no catch, and Kilby is perplexed yeah, yeah, by the wait ruling. A minute. What, what are y'all talking about here? Let's take a look at ourselves. There he is. The, the inside receiver just going to run a little dig route over the middle in front of the safeties. He reaches out and it looks like it did hit the ground there. Kilby was trying to sell us something. <laughs> That's a pretty good move for a red shirt freshman. Yeah. Out of Wayne, Indiana. Four catches last week. A team on four catches for 67 yards and a touchdown. He's lined up right back in that same spot. Right there, and that's the favorite target when he's in the ball game. And the play clock may have wound down before they got the snap off on it 36. Did. Those are the killers. Timeout. Well, they got the timeout. Eastern Michigan. That's their first try. Good coaching. So Eastern Michigan uses their first to save the five yard penalty and keep it a third and six. So with the EMU timeout, we'll step aside as well. Mizzou leading in this first quarter, 7-0. It's Alex Ross running back for Mizzou. Here he may be banked up. Let's check in with the third member of our party, Alex Cordry. Alex, any more on Ross? Hey, guys. We saw him down here on the sideline. He was smiling and talking with trainers, but they were massaging his right elbow, taping up that right elbow, and also they taped up his left foot. To keep an eye on that. Thanks, Alex. Uh, Demaria Crockett, the freshman. A couple of carries last week, but a fumble. We expect to see him tonight, and maybe even Nate Strong making his debut at running back at some point for Mizzou. That's double cover, but reaching back, picked off. There is a flag. Justin Smith with the pick for Mizzou. Another flag comes down at the 40 during the return. He's still on the move, and finally run down from behind at the Eastern Michigan 25. That's all coming back. That, that was pass interference. Eddie Doherty was the intended receiver who was double covered. Let's get the official ruling from our referee, James Carter. Deflated the crowd as they, they get the drift of what's going on here. This one's coming back. It's a pretty obvious call. Oh, are they discussed? Let's take another peek. Yeah, and you'll see it just at the end here. Watch the corner. Never gets his eyes back around and runs right into the receiver. And that's, uh, they just won't let you do that. And that's, of course, on John Gibson, number five. Got to get your head around. That's the main play. thing. Pass interference. Defense, number eight. Well, they called it on Wilson. He got the pick, but really it was Gibson. Blocking it back. Number 13. On the... Return team, that penalty is declined. 
the penalty would be 15 yards from the previous spot. Automatic first down, Eastern Michigan. Spencer Williams defensive end was guilty on the return for Mizzou, but it was definitely Gibson five. No doubt. You, you can see it. He did get his hand, head. He tried to get it back around, but he ran into the, re the receiver and pretty obvious. Wilson made a nice play. He'll get an attaboy, but he doesn't get a stat. So Eastern Michigan has a first down now in Mizzou territory. At the 44, EMU brings in running uh, fullback Levante Robinson. Zero setting up to bring pressure. Works in motions into the backfield. He gets the handoff, goes straight ahead, breaks a tackle, and lunges forward to about the 36-yard line. Game of about seven for Ian Erickson. Nice job of blocking by the fullback slash H back Levante Robinson. When they put him in the football game, he will take you to the ball. He's lined up right here, right now, and he's as good a lead blocker as I've seen. He even got the ball one time last week against Mississippi Valley State with a touchdown catch of four yards. Well, when you block people, then they try to get out of your way, and that opens you up for a pass. Five minutes to go, first quarter, 7 0 Mizzou, and a second and three for Eastern. Quarter tries to touch pass it, and it's picked off by Ariad Pennon. Run down inside the 10 by the quarterback, Porter. And Porter was so late throwing this football, it was an easy deal for Penton to just sit back. And just wait, you see him in his back paddle. He makes his break right there. That ball should have been thrown two steps prior. And that's on the young quarterback, Todd Porter. Ariad Pinton had an interception last week at West Virginia. That's his second of the season. Seventh Ooh. career. And Pinton, who had a really nice game in that secondary for Mizzou last week, comes up with the pick here. Young quarterbacks learning a lesson on the sideline. A first and goal for Mizzou after officially the game's first turnover. Straight ahead, Witter inside the five, down near the three. Another tackle for Juan Geraldo. They have been using Jason Reese as the blocking back. He's doing a nice job. Witter is hit by the rock wall, Kyle Rockwall. He prevents that from being more than just a yard or two gain. They're trying to go hurry here and catch Eastern Michigan not ready. Third and goal. From under center, Lock lost the football, and Eastern Michigan recovers. That's what I'm talking about. When you are a shotgun football team, and then you have to go into that quarterback sneak, bad things can happen. But this is really, it wasn't a fumbled exchange. It was the hit from Eastern Michigan that forces this thing. Lock is going to try to get to the outside where he thought he saw something going, and it was Ike Calderon who came in on blitzing off the edge and knocked it loose. And Jalen Pickett picked it up. He picketed it up. <laughs> yeah, but Ike Calderon definitely is the one who jarred it out. So Mizzou turns it right back over. That's a big play for Eastern Michigan. No doubt. That those are the kind of plays that keep you in ball games. It was, it was, a, it could be a 14-point swing if this offense can go 98. But they have to start at their own two, and then their right tackle jumps. Jimmy Liatiota, the right guard that is, jumped early. False start, offense number 56, half the distance, remains first down. You just see it. it's pretty simple. And he wasn't the only one. You had the left tackle going a little bit early as well, Gardner. It'll cost him half the distance, which is about a yard. So it's first and 11 from the one. Porter hands off in the end zone to Erickson, who get a little breathing room up just across the five. Brought down by Therese Hall, but gain of about four just to let Eastern Michigan breathe a little easier now. Was last week for Erickson. They got that jumbo package in. Usually they use that on the opponent's goal line. <laughs> They're using it on their own this time. Trying to get out of there and get one first down and then see what happens. 
Fake the handoff to Erickson. Porter going to run. Undercut at the 10 by Anthony Sherrills. They call that the naked boot. He had absolutely nobody out there blocking for him. Everybody went the other way, and it was enough to sell the defense. So he gets a nice pickup, giving them a manageable third and one here. And was caught by the starting strong safety from Mizzou Sherrills. On balance line. Erickson, first down, EMU. Well, he's 5'10, 206 pounds. But Erickson gets the first down, and there's a look. Shaq Van hiding under that uh, Gatorade towel. I'm a little surprised he's not been in the ball game. They've gone with Erickson almost exclusively after the first drive. Yeah, Van played the first couple of plays, didn't get the football, but perhaps something happened while he was in pass protection. We'll have to see. It's uh, definitely odd we have not seen him in a while. Now Blake Bannum, who's the number three running back in there, along with the fullback Robinson. Gary for Bantam straight ahead to Number about 20, the 17, 20. and Thomas Wilson up in him. I'm impressed with this offensive line for Eastern Michigan. They've got plenty of seniors on there, both tackles and in the center, and those are good football players. Cole Gardner, the left tackle, and Andrew Wiley, the right tackle. Matt Thornton, the big senior. Got Kilby back in the ball game. Porter gonna pass, and that's batted down. Yeah, he was looking for Kilby over the middle, but a nice play by getting their hand up and knocking it down was Kale Garrett. Garrett's a backup inside linebacker. He comes around, he sees the football, and gets a big old hand up to knock that down. I don't know if Kilby was open though. Eastern two of four on third down tonight. Looking at a third and six. Back into that empty set. See if they switch out of it. They're getting the play call right now. They're either going to take a timeout or, or milk this clock. This is going to be a timeout. So they use their second timeout of the half. Timeout, Eastern Michigan. A By the way, the LSU game, which was been in a lightning delay, is getting ready to kick at 8.25 Eastern time. At the moment, we are simulcasting on ESPN News and ESPN U, but shortly we, we will be on ESPN News exclusively. But we'll be back on both here momentarily as we step aside in Columbia. Next Saturday, the SEC Nation pregame show will break down everything from the gridiron to the grill for week three. SEC Nation presented by Regions Bank. Next Saturday at 10 a.m. Eastern right here on the SEC ESPN Network and streaming live on the ESPN app. Boy, and they, watch ESPN. They need some help breaking down the grill. I think I can help yeah. out a little bit. That's the center, Matt Thornton. Eastern Michigan with a stamp on his third down play. Porter running. Hit it to 20, and we'll have a first down as he jumped right over the Mizzou defender. And you can see he did not have it. It was supposed to be a quick throw. He hurdles the defender there, and that's a great run there and a great decision by Todd Porter. 12-yard run. Vastly improved from last week. First down, Eastern. Just across the 30 to the 31-yard line goes Blake Bantam. Charles Harris with a tackle for the Tigers. And another reminder, we're simulcasting at the moment on ESPNU and ESPN News. Those of you watching on ESPNU, the kickoff at LSU is coming up at 825 Eastern. At that point, the LSU game will be on ESPNU. We'll be exclusively on ESPN News. Eight play of the drive coming up for Eastern Michigan. On this drive, seven plays, six runs, only one pass. A lot of window dressing prior to this play. Been about four shifts. And the snap. Goes unnoticed by Porter, and the running back, Bantam, has to go back and cover it up back near the 15. It looked like Porter was maybe calling a timeout. He had his hands together. I don't know if he was making a teepee or if he was calling a timeout. Watch the quarterback's hands. I think he called a timeout. He did. But he didn't get it. So the Eagles are fortunate they didn't lose the football again. 
A lot of confusion in terms of getting the proper personnel into the game and then the shifting to get into the proper formation, and it just led to a lot of confusion. And the center lets the ball go without the quarterback knowing about it. Not good. So it makes this now a third down and 25. Porter has to roll out. A flag comes out. The pass dangerous and batted away. Like Browning was double covered, but a hold back. Yeah, Cole Gardner put a bear hug on Charles Harris when he tried a spin move. Holding, number 75 offense. That penalty decline. Fourth down. And this is the, uh, the things Charles Harris can do. Watch, this is the matchup over here on this side, and the spin move is going to throw Gardner off. There he is. He just put a bear hug on him. What are you going to do? You got to protect your quarterback. Yeah, that one goes under the file. Uh, easy to call. Yeah. I saw it all the way up here. So now they have to punt from near their own end zone. Austin Barnes punting for Eastern Michigan. Zeus will get very good field position. Johnson no fields goes to the far side slips by one tackle now he's coming back to the near side Jonathan Johnson has some running room into the end zone no flags 56 yard punt return for Jonathan Johnson right on the final play of the first quarter you see that happen a lot when the receiver or the punt returner muffs the ball and then picks it up and doesn't get smeared immediately. Usually it means a good return is com coming because guys will overrun that thing. Uh, they did have a shot. Br Brody Hoying had a chance to make that tackle. Once he missed it, the cutback came and there was nobody home. Turner Adams is on for the extra point once again. Out of the hold of Jake Prince. 14 0 Mizzou. Well, sometimes a muff can turn into a good thing, Ray Bentley. Yeah, and it does right here. And you see, he does just doesn't get the handle on the football. That was the missed tackle right there. Now comes the cutback. Had a couple of good peel back blocks, and then it turns into a foot race. And Missouri wins that one, and they're up 14 0 here at the end of the first quarter. Well, the punt return for touchdown from Jonathan Johnson, the final play of the first quarter. Mizzou leads 14-0 as we go to quarter number two. The Tigers coming into this game have been held to under 14 points total in seven of their last eight games. The only exception was their last win, which came against BYU at Arrowhead in Kansas City back on November 14th of last year when they won 20-16. Well, this has been a team that has relied on defense, and they're trying to change that under Josh Heupel, the new offensive coordinator. And Pretty good quarter. It always helps when the special teams will score for you, too. Well, a big story here is that Shaq Van has not gotten a carry, and apparently he's a bit banged up. Let's check in with Alex Cordery down on the field. Let's get more on Shaq Van. Yeah, not good news for, ja for Shaq Van. Hearing it is a shoulder injury, there's no indication on his return yet. Guys, we saw him on the, on the sideline with a Gatorade towel over his head. He was getting his teammates riled up. You know, he was in the huddle, but he did not have his helmet on. Wow, thank you, Alex. This is a huge loss here, oh, Ray, because... Oh, big time. I, I said at the top... Uh, He's probably the best back on the field. And he was in for the first couple of plays, did not get a carry, so something must have happened in pass protection, just guessing, but the shoulder injury has him out of the game. Porter throwing on first down, taking a deep shot. Batted away at the Mizzou 40 by Justin Smith, Sergio Bailey, the intended target for Porter. Great protection to give him a chance to throw this football, and Porter throws a strike. But Gibson times the jump. He high points the football much better than the receiver, Bailey. And Bailey could have caught that if he'd have timed his jump. He had body position. Another 
thing Porter does extremely well is the cadence, and it's a clap cadence. He'll fake clap, he'll double clap, and he already got a couple of offsides in this ball game doing it. Swings it out to Doherty on the edge. Able to turn the corner before he Porter's collides at the 30-yard line with Anthony Sherrills. Short passing game is really where Todd Porter excels. And they need to get him better throwing the football down the field, but he's got to have help from his receivers. And also, there's extra pressure on him now with Shaq Van out of this game. Eastern Michigan, three of five on third down tonight. I truly believe Eastern is milking the clock by going to this check with me and look over to the sideline offense. Porter pulls it down. He's going to run with it and have the first down. He tumbles forward up near the 37. Thomas Wilson to get credit for the tackle, but a five-yard run, enough for Porter to keep the drive going. I'm almost thinking that that, that was a called quarterback draw. At the 30, yard I know he went awful late, and outside. I think that's what you need to do is go late, because I saw Armstrong, his left or his right guard, he uh, took off up the field. He was not pass blocking late in that down. Three carries for 22 yards for the quarterback quarter. He hands it off straight ahead to about the 40. For a gain on first down of three. Here Erickson. John Armstrong, the left guard, pulled around a little gap scheme. He led right up into the hole, and it got in behind him. This offensive line, I think, is performing pretty well. The Missouri defensive line, highly vaunted, and has produced a lot of good players over the years. Porter went under center, now plans to throw. Drops right at midfield. He's trying to hit new plow again, and a great coverage by Gibson, who got beat earlier in the ball game. He's tightened it up. He's got his little hands on him, but they're going to let you play a little bit. You see, that's what you do when the receiver puts his hands up to catch the ball. You swipe your hands between them. Odds are you'll make a play. Third and seven for EMU. And Isaac Holder in the slot up top. And again, Porter under center. Here comes Mizzou. Harris leading the charge. But that leaves Erickson wide open, and he's got some room to run down the near sideline. A little strut inside the 30, and he's tackled by Thomas Wilson at the 25 of Mizzou. Long gain of 41 yards for EMU. They're going to blitz off of here, and then you throw right behind the blitz. And the guy who's supposed to have coverage, 22, got basically blocked out by Browning. It was Sheryls who got blocked out of that play. Here's a chance to head towards the end zone for New Plow and a stiff arm on Thomas Wilson. But Sheryls is able to come up and make the tackle at the six, and that is a long gainer for New Plow. Yeah, and that's, that's just a missed tackle. They're going to throw it out here, and the missed tackle's coming from the inside. And it's Sheryls again, just misses that play, and that, that's New Plow. Plow is way inside the five. So it is first and goal for Eastern Michigan looking for their first score tonight. Inside the first couple of minutes of this second quarter, bringing the fullback Levante Robinson. In motion, new plow. It's a direct snap to Erickson who broke one tackle, gets near the end zone, and will be stopped just shy. Terry Beckner had an outstanding shot to get him in the backfield, but could not wrap him up. And yeah, th this is basically a wildcat. Wildcat with Erickson as the quarterback. He fakes it, but he, he's a tough runner. He doesn't, he, won't, he don't like to go down. I don't like the way this kid plays football. Porter back in from the one, and what a play made from the backside by Donovan Newsom to keep Eastern Michigan and Erickson out of the end zone. Yeah, this is how you do it, coming over the top on goal line stuff or coming from the backside edge. And, and that's where Newsom came from. And a lot of times, if you're running inside on goal line, you don't block that edge. You expect your back to beat him into the end zone. Third and goal from inside the one. Another try, and Erickson barrels his way past Thomas Wilson for an Eastern Michigan touchdown. 
really nice drive by the Eagles here to punch this one in. And it's really all about the effort at the last is busting through tackles to get in the end zone. Erickson getting it done. Erickson had a couple of rushing touchdowns last week, so there's his third of the season. To get the Eagles on the board here. And the point after is knocked through by Paul Fricano. So the touchdown for Erickson. And Eastern Michigan rolls right back into this game early in the second quarter from Columbia. They're taping up Ian Erickson. Hopefully that's not serious. He was a big part of that 10 play drive that goes 75 yards. It was well balanced for a five rushes, five passes in the 10 plays. They converted all three of their third downs. And that will give the Eagles a jolt of confidence. Yeah. Ability to move the ball all the way down the field like they did. However, if Erickson's banged up a little bit, they've already lost Shaq Van. They're going to be deep into that depth chart. Blake Bannum is the only one I have left on my board here, although they do have a redshirt freshman, Breck Turner, who could possibly come in and carry the ball if they have those issues. Marie Crockett, Jonathan Johnson back deep to receive this kick. Brendan Ranius. Johnson who has the punt return for touchdown elects to bring it out from a couple yards deep just across the 21. Coming up tonight, 1030 Eastern Time, SEC Now will have the highlights, breakdowns, and comprehensive analysis from all the SEC games of the day. And it streams live as well on the ESPN app and watch ESPN. It's a big drive for EMU, Ray, to get them right back in the game after that Jonathan Johnson punt return for touchdown really kind of took the wind out of their sails. No doubt. I mean, that, that one was a, a tough one to deal with, but they came back and answered on offense. Todd Porter, I thought, handled that drive outstandingly. And then they got a little tricky with some throwbacks and, and uh, you know, the uh, wildcat down on the goal line, and they made it work. Lock hands off and a carry for Demarie Crockett, the freshman, true freshman from Little Rock. We had a couple of carries, so it wasn't a, a big sample size, but he had the, the fumble at West Virginia, which really thwarted his day, but this guy's got a lot of potential. Yeah, that fumble caught him while they were driving, and that, that took a lot of wind out of their sails in that regard. But they still put him back in the game, and they, they like him a lot. And, hey, the kid's a, a youngster, a true freshman. He's going to take his lumps, but he's probably, he might end up being their starter by the time this season is over. Third down, it's short. Give it right back to him. So three carries for the freshman, and he has a first down. Forward progress will get him all the way up near the 35. Missouri went to bully ball on that set of plays. And they're just running right straight at this Eagle defense. And they're saying, show me if you can stop him. See what I did there? I saw perfectly what she did. Well done. Well sewn into the fabric of this game. That's a deep shot. A little late contact, but the ball looked like it was going to be over the head of Jamon Moore anyway. How about this? I mean, I how many times has Jamon Moore been targeted tonight? That's the first one I could think of. He was targeted 23 of 51 pass attempts last week by Locke. Well, I, I think they did it in large part to throw off the Eastern game plan. I guarantee you they had the attention of the defensive staff, uh, Jamon Moore, and how many times they went after him. So maybe later in the game they'll dial him back up. Come to the near side, Emmanuel Hall, who had a touchdown catch in the first quarter tonight. His first collegiate TD. He's tackled by Jalen Phelps. Drew Locke has been extremely accurate with everything except for maybe that previous deep ball. But otherwise, he's throwing dimes all over this field tonight. Tigers three of five on third down and on a third and four. Nothing there. Kyle Rockwall able to prevent Crockett. And getting back to the line of scrimmage, he may have lost a little bit, but nonetheless, it's going to be fourth down. Rockwall did an outstanding job. They tried to wham him with Jason Reese, the tight end, almost like a trap type deal, and he caught across the face of that quote unquote trapper and got right into the running back's face. That's an outstanding play by Rockwall. So Mizzou picks up one first down on that possession, but now will punt from Corey Fatoni. Lake Batham. Back at the 15 for Eastern Michigan. Eastern leads their defense on playing punt safe. High short punt this time from Fatoni. But it'll take a very nice Mizzou roll all the way inside the five. 
Bantam's got to get over there and try to make that catch. That, that's hidden yardage. Eastern Michigan's going to be going to begin a second possession tonight inside their own five when we come back. First home game for Mizzou head coach Barry Odom as part of our AT&T Inside Access tonight. Let's take a look at how the Tigers back in December introduced their new head coach to their team, our AT&T Inside Access. We have selected our new head coach, and he's here with us tonight. And I'm going to let him in the door, all right? Oh! As you can deem from that reaction, it was a popular hiring as head coach to replace Gary Pinkle from the Mizzou players. Yeah, I like that they went inside the current staff that they had. I think Barry Odom was ready for that position. He had, had proven himself throughout, and, and he played here. That, that means so much, I think. He, he gets it. He understands the culture, the history of this program, and he's, it's in his blood. Erickson, who had the touchdown run on their last possession, the pickup of about four after that 53 yard punt from Fatoni Eastern starting inside their own five again and now up to the 10 where a third and three will await. Let me uh, correct about Van's number. Shaq Van did have one carry tonight for 10 yards. Gets banged up. This is a guy who had 20 rushes for 152 yards and two TDs last week in their opening week win. So they're without Van. That's putting even more of the load on Erickson. And Erickson's handling it well. I mean, he's been outstanding. Now, they had to get both ankles taped. Uh, maybe it was because he wasn't expecting so many carries. He figured he might want to shore things up. But Eastern Michigan, a third and three here. They're six of eight tonight on third down conversions. That's outstanding. Porter gives it up. Erickson running right, turns it upfield, breaks a tackle. Has the first down across the 35, brought down at the 40. Anthony Sherrills catches up to him, but there goes Erickson. Needed three for a first down, and he winds up running for 30. And uh, what he does in this play that I think is so impressive is breaking the tackle and keeping his balance. Right there, the inside move. He makes Wilson miss. Now you can see he does not have breakaway speed, and that, that would be the only knock on him. Pump fake. Porter goes underneath too high. Intended receiver was Antoine Porter, not related to Todd. Yeah, and when we talked to Chris Creighton and his, he talked about the offense, and that was the one guy they think is the best in space, Antoine Porter. Thought they needed to get him more looks, more targets out of that slot position. He's difficult to cover. He had three catches for 40 yards last week in a touchdown. The, the back I mentioned, Brett Turner in the ball game now, number 33, alongside of his partner, Erickson. Turner motions out of the backfield. Porter hands it off. Erickson hit in the backfield by Josh Augusta, the 6'4", 355-pound senior. <laughs> Augusta is a large human being, and they'll also use him as a fullback on offense at times. Now, one of the things that Missouri has been doing is they, they take their inside two defenders and they have moved them back off the ball. And I don't know. They're in a transition. They're learning that technique. Coach Odom said it's something that he's done in the past, and he thinks he's got a group who can do it. And I don't think they've mastered it yet. And they've moved them up a little bit as the course of this game has gone on. And right now, they're both up there pretty good. Porter needs a long one on third and 11, and an incompletion at the 45. Going after Sergio Bailey, Ariad Pinton had the coverage. And again, Porter is a half of a tick late throwing the football. And you can't do that, especially against a good corner like Penton. I mean, he, you see him, he, he had heading turn, but that ball's got to be thrown a little bit quicker. The timing of that, I mean, it was open, except that the throw was late. So despite a 30-yard run on that possession by Erickson, the drive stalls and Eastern Michigan will punt. Johnson, who's already run one back tonight, lets that bounce. And to 
Hawks and EMU roll inside the 15. 46 yard punt for Austin Barnes with no return. Let's take a look at today's SEC notebook. Florida Wallop, Kentucky, 45-7. Is that like 100 in a row now? Alabama, it was a bit of a game early, but they beat Western Kentucky 38-10. Hurts with 287 yards and a couple of TDs in Georgia. How about this scare? Yeah. Struggled. Nichols had to lead in that game several times. 204 yards for Eason, but a two-point win over Nichols State. Going to the edge. Wingo with his first catch of the night before he's brought down by Jason Beck. Another perfect throw from Drew Locke. All of his short stuff has been right on target tonight. Once again, this time to Jason Reese. Picks up six and a first down for Mizzou. Those are confidence builders for quarterbacks. A little stack routes, a little hitch routes. Get the ball out quick. Put it between the numbers, get something going. There's a carry for Ish Winter who breaks free. Pulled down at the 46 from behind by number three, Jason Beck. 21 yard gain for number 21, Ish Winter. Outstanding. Yeah, outstanding block by Kevin Pendleton. He opened that hole. Straight ahead once again up near midfield was Ish Winter. This is where you hope that your tempo, if you're Missouri, is starting to wear down your opponent's defense and it looks like they're trying to run it right down their throat and continue to make those guys breathe hard. Tried to bounce it outside and then he's corralled by a number of EMU players including their number 52 Pat O'Connor. Jeremiah Harris was one of the first one to yeah. that play. They're pretty strong at each end. Harris is outstanding. He had a couple of, uh, excuse me, a two and a half tackles for loss last week. He gets good penetration. Third and eight thrown underneath, incomplete. Intended for Jason Reese. No flags, and it'll be fourth down. Boy, Ike Spearman got there perhaps a tick early. The crowd here doesn't like it. It was close enough to me that uh, I don't I don't feel bad that they didn't throw a flag. Of course, spoken a, like a linebacker. Like a middle linebacker, right? Spearman's a pretty good one, too. Home opener for the Missouri Tigers. Glad you could join us on this Saturday. Along with former collegiate and NFL linebacker Ray Bentley. I'm Mark Neely. Alex Cordry down on the field. Ray's alma mater, Central Michigan, with a crazy ending in Stillwater today to beat Oklahoma State. How about that? The Hail Mary hook and ladder on the last play. <laughs> Unbelievable. Bantam back to receive the Fatoni punt. Fatoni punted for 53 yards his last time, but we have a pre-snap flag that's going to bring this back. Looks like a delay of game to me. Unless they got the timeout. The ruling on the field is an incomplete pass. The play is under further review. Well, the officials are going to look at it. I didn't think there was any question that it was an incomplete pass. But apparently the officials think otherwise. and want to take a look at it, send it up. To the replay booth, Ron Leatherwood is the replay official tonight. With George Raniger, his communicator. And the reason they're looking at that, obviously it wasn't caught, but they want to see if perhaps Eastern Michigan had 12 men on the field. Shouldn't take too long to count to 12. See if, see if I can do it. All right, we got one. You're going to freeze that, guys, too. I don't hear you counting, Ray. Well, you can see it. Okay. <laughs> I, I got confused. <laughs> I only got 10 in my screen, and then there's one back to, uh, I don't know if there's two safeties deep or one. It's not in the frame, so I, I can't help you on that one. I, I applaud the effort. I did no count partner. to 10, though. You, you did. You did get that high. With my finger. <laughs> well, on a somewhat related subject, the replay officials have some additional responsibilities they can use this year when it comes to targeting where the replay official can actually instigate a targeting call and can also examine more than just the targeting call on a replay. That's not the instance here, but just to bring that up, since we take a look at the replay official, that's the communicator, George Raniger, on the left. So. Now you see the player coming off. Okay, here he goes right here. That's the. 
possible 12th man and it was on the previous play prior to that punt which they blew the whistle and stopped the action before that punt got off and the question is did he make it off the field prior to the ball being snapped well here's my question Ray did they punch down from the booth obviously nobody on the field made the call they didn't throw a flag they were lining up to have Mizzou punt and it's, then the play stopped. I, I, you can't do that. That's, that's uh, the my only, question. The I only think thing could. you can do that on is, is targeting right, right now, and that's a new rule this year, which I think is outstanding. But uh, what probably happened is one of the officials on the field talked to one of the other ones and said, we have a problem here, and, and uh, the communication was late to the referee to stop the thing, is, is my best guess, because you can't stop it from upstairs. Right. All right, here's the man that's in question trying to get off the field. Did he win the race in terms? No, he's clearly on the field. So that's going to be a five-yard penalty, but it's not going to be a first down if indeed they are going to call the substitution penalty for too many men on the field against Eastern Michigan. The only issue is do they have it on camera? Uh, you know, that was our, our widest look we showed you, and you know, I did count. Yeah, my, we counted. So I mean, I, that's so indisputable the, video evidence, is it not? To uh, well, I, I counted ten, and then the, the one guy that was getting off ah, would make it eleven. I, I so we okay. didn't have enough in the frame. We didn't have the deep safety in there. But there was a deep safety in on the field in the play, and so they did have twelve on the field. Do they have? The video evidence? Well, then they don't have the video evidence. If you can't see him in the picture, then it's not indisputable video evidence, even though. However, the back judge can tell you, yes, there was a the guy. The previous there. play was under review for 12 men on the field by the receiving team. That's an illegal substitution against the receiving team. Five-yard penalty. Third down and four from the previous spot. Game clock operator, please reset the game clock to 351. 551, correction, 551. So they do have enough to make the call for the illegal substitution and too many men on the field. So it'll be a third down and four. So the drive is not over for Mizzou. Chris Creighton's a little upset about it, but he's saying, hey, it is fourth down. They're, they have third down on the darn mark, down marker right now. Well, the official but just said third down. The officials are, are still clustered in the middle of the field discussing the situation. I'm being told that the replay booth called down to stop that action for the count of the players. The correct down is third down. And he does have the down correct because yeah. we have to go back two plays. You got to get that punt out of your mind. Right. So instead of third and nine, now we have third and four. Well, we are at the site of the fifth down that Colorado had. Back in the day against Missouri. <laughs> the, the ghosts are that? still here? Yeah, perhaps. Well, we've got the down correct showing blitz and they jump early. Gonna give him a free play. It's gonna be a first down anyway, taking a deep shot and just out of reach. O'Connor jumped. So Drew Locke took a shot going for Jamon Moore. Jamon just couldn't quite get under it. You're gonna see it come. Connor right up in there. There he goes early. Doesn't get back in time. Drew Locke Defense. knows he has a free play. Five yard penalty. Results on a first down. And that's the one, I think the last piece of Drew Locke's game in terms of throwing the football is getting that deep touch. He's overthrown it. I think he needs to put a little more air under it and get it higher and let his guy adjust and run to the football. And that'll come. Yeah. Locke wow. taking a shot again. Incomplete in the vicinity of Wingo. Brady Hoying was the one who leaped in the air for Eastern Michigan to try to get a hand on that pass. And they definitely took the deep shot on the wheel route to try to catch Eastern Michigan asleep after that long delay. Lock locks right on the back out of the backfield. Demetrius Mason, who was lined up there, and he goes for a first down of 17 yards. Up near the 25 yard line of EMU.
Lock going far side again. This time he has Jamon. Moore with the catch at the 15. That tempo right now is really kicking up. Remember, they have to get the extra football off the field. First catch of the night for Jamon Moore. He had a career high eight catches last week for 104 yards at West Virginia. He was targeted 23 times of the 51 passes from Locke. On the ground this time to Ishwitter. Number three, Jason Beck. Holds him to about a four yard game. This is where the Eastern Michigan defense will have to start firing up the blitzes. Witter again up the middle. Almost broken. Yeah, they can't hang right now in base. I don't know if they're tired or what's going on, but they are getting pushed off the football are the Eagles. I think they need to bring some heat. Stay in base. Giving it to Witter again. He's down near the one. And it'll be first and goal inside the one. Kyle Rockwall kept him out of the end zone. Winner dives into the end zone. Touchdown, Mizzou, a one-yard plunge. And Missouri just decided to stick it in their ear. Four straight runs after that delay, and they pounded into the end zone. Witter, who had one rushing touchdown last year, that was in the game against South Carolina, gets his first rushing touchdown of 2016. Turner Adams, the junior, has been doing the place kicking for Missouri tonight. He's back on for his third extra point attempt. And that one goes wide right. Now they had some issues with Tucker McCann on a couple of field goal misses. The true freshman, they go to Adams. He misses the extra point, but here's the TD run, the plunge by Witter, and it's 20 to 7 Tigers. Four twenty-five left till halftime here in Columbia. And coming up at the intermission, you can watch the live performance of Marching Mizzou on SEC Network Plus. You can start streaming now on the ESPN app, and I'll watch ESPN. Marching Mizzou getting ready for their halftime performance right now in this 2016 Mizzou home opener. They lead Eastern Michigan, twenty to seven. Tucker McCann, true freshman, is on to kick off. Got all of that one. He did indeed. Come out to the 25 for the Tigers. And the true freshman Tucker McCann who hasn't done the place kicking duties tonight. I wonder if the Turner Adams missed extra point will change that at all as we proceed. We got a kicker controversy, bro. Uh, <laughs> well, the freshman certainly when you get thrown into yeah, the fire is a true freshman. Time. Not easy. Right and left, Erickson. He almost got past Donovan Newsom, but he tripped him up by the shoe tops. I think that's probably the best place to tackle Erickson. <laughs> you hit him up above the knees, you he bounces right off you. Picked up about four, second down and six. Four minutes to go in this first half from Columbia. They do have Nigel Kilby in the ball game. Big tight end trying to hide him right back here. Can get low. Oh, you can't see me now. <laughs> Hard to hide. Six seven. Right. Erickson barreling through again and once again got tripped up at the last moment that time by Joey Burkett linebacker Joey Burkett. That was a pretty quick lateral move Erickson made to get to the uh, next hole to bounce out there. I, I'm becoming more impressed with him the more I see this kid. In Shaq Van, only one carry tonight for 10 yards and banged up and has not played since. That was right at the beginning of the game, first series for EMU.
Very deliberate again as the play clock drops under 10 seconds. Get it off with two on the play clock. Porter pressured. Pass broken up, incomplete at the 31. Looks like Isaiah Fuller. Sex to the intended receiver, but nonetheless, number 30, Michael Shear there defensively for Mizzou, and EMU will punt. That was a great coverage on the back end of there. There was nowhere for Porter to go with the football. And even late when he did make the throw, that man had gotten picked up and covered on the underneath crossing route. Outstanding defensive series there for the Tigers. That's the first three and out tonight we've had for either team. Jonathan Johnson back. He has already returned one punt, 54 yards for a touchdown tonight in the first quarter. He'll let that roll inside the 15. And it'll roll out of bounds at about the 13. 2.41 left, first half. Mizzou's offense coming back on the field with a 20 to 7 lead. Welcome back to Columbia, Missouri, where Mizzou leads Eastern Michigan 20 to 7. Now the show me motto that Coach Odom and his staff have adopted represents Missouri's rich history, but it also motivates the team to put the best product on the field because it's about tradition, pride, and letting your hard work do all the talking. Coach Odom tells us all you have to do is ask your team, show me what you got. Oh, Alex, as someone who grew up in the Show Me State, I can verify that. I've heard that my whole life. You, Ray, grew up in Michigan, so we've got both sides covered here tonight, well covered. Yeah, I'm not sure what our slogan is, to be honest <laughs> with you. Drew Locke distributes. Jonathan Johnson still going. He already has a punt return for touchdown tonight. Now he has... Another long return for touchdown, 87 yards. Great blocking on the outside to bust this one open. Well, Johnson is the first receiver with three catches tonight. Drew Locke has thrown to eight different receivers. None had had more than two receptions until that catch and run there by Jonathan Johnson for 87 yards, his third reception of the night. That point after. Looked like a replay of the last wide one. Wide right. Let's go back to this touchdown, this explosive play from this offense. And here's the receiver. You're going to get great blocks by both number 10, Jason Reese, and number six, Jamon Moore, and the missed tackle, a bad angle from Vince Calhoun, and then it's off to the races. Jonathan Johnson has an extra gear as he just puts everyone behind him. And True Lock says, that's how you throw an 87-yard touchdown pass, baby. And that puts him uh, up about 200 yards, 202 passing yards here in the first half. Two TDs now. In this half for Jonathan Johnson. Three catches for 108. And don't forget the punt return of 54 yards. Right, and with the third touchdown. catch there, Jonathan Johnson now the leading receiver for the Missouri Tigers tonight. Uh, Lockett hit eight different receivers, and the, the leading guy had two catches. And now we have a guy with three and an 87-yarder in his pocket, that being Jonathan Johnson. Well, the what looked like a replay on the missed extra point Adams missed the extra point on the previous one. That was the freshman Tucker McCann who came back in to attempt the extra point there. Also missed wide right. So there is a kicker controversy yeah, going I, here. I think we can't ignore that now. Here's McCann to kick off, though. It's a 26 to 7 Mizzou lead. Blake Bannon back deep. One thing Tucker McCann has done is on the kickoffs, boot these through the inline for a touchback. Well, coming up on the Regents Bank Halftime Report, we'll join Dari Noka, Booger McFarland, and Chris Doring. The Hogs starting strong tonight. And how about the battle in Bristol at Speedway? And first half recap as well of this one in Columbia, the home opener for the Tigers. All coming up on the Regents Bank 
halftime report home debut as head coach for Barry Odom. They lose in his opener last week at West Virginia and he was shall we say very self deprecating of his own performance in week one. Yeah as was Demonte Cross the the defensive coordinator they they, uh, they took that one for him. Porter hands off Erickson tried to give the stiff arm to Joey Burkett who would have none of that and pulls him down. I'm a little surprised that Eastern is being this conservative now especially with the the score being down 19 here and it being time close to the end of this half. This first charge timeout of the half. This will be a 30 second timeout. Well, Missouri thinking let's get the ball back another time. We'll sure. use their first timeout. As explosive <laughs> as they've been with Johnson, why not? Either punt it to him or, or throw him a quick screen. Well, last check of time of possession, which is probably the most meaningless stat of the night. EMU has had the ball 18 minutes, Mizzou 9. That was as a, so basically 2 to 1, but we expect that with Mizzou's yeah, it, hurry up offense. Eastern Michigan, though, has slowed things down a bit, but Eastern Michigan set a couple of miscues tonight. Yeah, they've, they've made some mistakes. This the, the late throw from Porter gets picked off and goes the almost to the house. It leads to a touchdown as Penton takes that one. And then the bobble on this punt return by Johnson, I think it caused the coverage to overrun it, and their angles weren't good anymore. And then his cutback had all kinds of good. Uh, Cut back blocks and he took it to the house. Takes the hand off to Erickson and then Porter. It looked like he grabbed the face mask of Donovan Newsom. Now you can call an offensive player for a face mask. No, no, no flag I've there. Maybe seen it once in my life. <laughs> it's very rare, but it can happen, but we don't see it. Uh, I usually let that ball carrier be pretty liberal with a stiff arm to a face mask. And I'm sure you took a few in your day that were never called. Of course not. And uh, I got to tell you that stiff arm never worked for me. <laughs> or on me I should say. Well EMU is content to let some clock run. Mizzou used a timeout. They have a couple left. Elected not to use one here. Just don't get what I expect the tempo on this drive. 7 of 11 on third down and Porter will convert again. I think they, he, his knee hit and they're going to mark him short. Uh, yep. He kind of went down on the knee and then took the hit and then lunged forward. Yeah with that spot he's going to be a yard short. That was not as smooth as he had been previously running the ball is a little awkward at the end. And, uh, this was the thing that I felt he really needed to improve on right there knee down football right at the 33 yard line. In fact, and a half. second look at it he maybe even got a good spot. Yeah I think they were generous <laughs> yeah. now that you mention it. Mizzou uses a second timeout so they'll have one left that stopped it with 125 to go. Yeah they want to run another one play 87 yard drive. But I, I'm puzzled. I, I really am by the lack of tempo and aggressiveness by Eastern Michigan. It wasn't deplorable field position. Uh, screen draw maybe to start out the drive, something like that to get it going, or a quick pass. But to just kind of run the football three times in a row and have your quarterback carry it a couple times, I don't know that that's the best play calling right there, to be honest. Jonathan Johnson back deep to receive this punt but it's angled to the near side. And the Tigers are going to let it roll and it's going to be down inside the 20. The SEC ESPN Network grants you an all access pass to Gator football for their second game of the season against Kentucky. You get never before seen footage and sounds from pregame to postgame SEC inside. Kentucky versus Florida comes up at 7 Eastern Wednesday and also streams live on the ESPN app and watch ESPN Florida spoiler alert did win that game handily 45 7 but you'll get a little more exclusive look behind the scenes on Wednesday at that one. Sounds like fun. Keep it out of the hands of Jonathan Johnson. I guess that's something that EMU has learned in the first half tonight. Yeah. And I don't know how you do it now that you can kick it away from him, which is what the, they did on that last one but. Can't stop him on a, a bubble screen. Lock going deep. Right on target. Down the sideline, Ray Wingo. 
that was what I was talking about in terms of Locke putting more air under the football on the deep shots and letting his guy run underneath it. And Ray Wingo outran the secondary of Eastern Michigan, and it was a perfect throw as Justin Woody and Daquan Pace couldn't keep pace. 66-yard gain inside the 15, and then some movement on the right side of the Missouri line. Well, let's go back and take a look at this throw yeah, and catch. Here's your receiver, but what, I, what struck me in this was the, the height on the ball from Drew Locke. He finally got enough air under it so his guy could run under it. Perfectly thrown, splitting the two defenders. Uh, that's good stuff right there from Drew Locke. Yeah, Daquan Pace, the corner covering, and then safety help from Justin Moody, but perfectly placed by Locke going for the end zone here. A similar situation, but this time for Jamon Moore. And an incomplete pass stops it with under a minute to go. Those are the best numbers and a half in Drew Locke's career, I can tell you. In fact, his career high is 280 passing yards he had last week uh, against West Virginia. He's got 270 here in the first half. Locke. Great timing. Inside the five and lunging into the end zone. A touchdown for Jason Reese. And the Tigers add on again here late in the first half. Well, Juan Geraldo, who's made a number of tackles in the first half for EMU, had a shot at Reese, but couldn't keep him out of the end zone. Yeah, he couldn't make the tackle, but that was immaculate timing as Locke threw the football before the break, and he hit his receiver right on the numbers between the 10 and the 1, and Reese is in the house. Well, freshman Tucker McCann gets a shot at the extra point. And that one is good. Hey, no. it inside the right upright. 19-yard touchdown catch for Jason Reese, and it's 33-7. And here's Reese. He's just going to go up the field and make an in cut, and Locke will throw the ball before he makes this cut and splits the two defenders. There's the missed tackle as Reese, who's been blocking all night, gets a little payoff right there. Well, Drew Locke got thrown into the fire last year. The Matty Mock situation, of course, was a big issue. Locke became the first true freshman to start at quarterback for Mizzou since Corby Jones back in 1995. Started the last eight games. He took a beating. He, he, he did. He took a, a physical and emotional beating, and, and almost to the point where the coaches this year are like, just forget about last year. Oh, you have to. And he has... Uh, Really seems to be blossoming, and I know you have to take into account a number of factors here, but this looks to be another step tonight for Drew Locke. And both Coach Heupel and, and Coach Odom are glowing in their praise for Drew Locke. They say nobody wants it more than him. Nobody works harder than him. He's the first man in, the last man out every day. He wants it. He's leading this football team, and he's maturing tonight before our eyes. McCann once again knocks it through the end zone. There you're high, it. yep. Not 14 for 19. Not too shabby of a half. Three touchdown passes. Drew Locke last year, he did play in all 12 games, had the eight starts, but he had four touchdown passes, eight picks all of last season. So he has now equaled his output of touchdown passes from a year ago. Had one last week, he has three so far. And he threw some really nice balls on that drive. The deep one and then the touchdown pass were both as good as you can get. Well, Erickson with the carries were under a minute to go in this first half. What well, was a 14 to 7 game in favor of Mizzou relatively early in this second quarter has been ballooned up to 33 to 7. Yeah, 19 point second quarter here for the Tigers. And I. I still don't get the lack of a sense of urgency from Eastern Michigan. They do have to snap it. Now they're just going to take a knee here and take it to the locker room. Not, I'm not uh, entirely distraught about this drive in terms of taking the knee and just getting in there at halftime. But the previous one, three runs, punt. Uh, that, that I didn't like. Big first half.
for Drew Locke. Already with a career high in passing yards in a single game. Interestingly, we have not seen Marvin Zanders come in for the Missouri Tigers at all, and they tried to work him in and use a two quarterback system. I don't know if that affected Drew Locke or not, but he sure looked pretty good not, not missing any plays here in the first half. That's a great point, though, Ray. We didn't see Marvin Zanders at any point in the first half. It was all Drew Locke, a quarterback for Missouri. Alex is down on the field with head coach Barry Odom. Coach Jonathan Johnson, his two punt returns for touchdowns. How much spark did he give your team in the first half? Well, I think Jonathan's got, you know, uh, big playability offensively and in the kicking game, obviously, and it showed up a little bit. Um, excited for him, excited for our team to have some success there. We've got to treat it 0 0 and come out the third quarter. Your offense got it going late in the second quarter. How do you keep it going? Well, let's talk to Drew off the field. He looked at me and said, Coach, his score is tied. We'll be ready second half. Got to like to hear that. Thanks a lot, Coach. Thanks. Guys. Do so once again. No question about the strength of that leg. Well, Alex Cordry's down on the field. What was on the mind of Eastern Michigan head coach Chris Creighton? Yeah, his first word, frustrating. Coach Creighton said they really kind of shot themselves in the foot. But Missouri, they were able to score fast. The first half kind of defined by self-imposed mistakes. But he says it's a great challenge for his team here in the second half to get back in this one. Now, he did give us an update on Shaq Van. He said the trainers will continue to ice him. But he said don't expect to see him here in the second half. Uh, Alex, thanks so much. It, that, that's completely changed the complexion of this game offensively for Eastern Michigan. Van just one carry before getting banged up after having 156 rushing yards in their opener last week. Todd Porter looking to throw, dumps it off underneath to the back. Erickson, that's well read for a loss of a yard by Michael Shear. I haven't mentioned Shear's name much. He led this team with 10 tackles last week, but he wasn't happy at all with the way he played. He, Felt like he, uh, in the heat of the battle, reverted back to the previous defense. When Damani Cross came in with Barry Odom as a defensive coordinator, they changed the, the terminology, and <laughs> Shearer had a flashback. Porter comes to the near side. Bailey with the catch, but quickly wrapped up by John Gibson. Now, that's a common thing, Ray, I would think, whenever a new coordinator comes in, terminology changes. But you, you have, have to realize how that's how big of an adjustment that is for players. Oh, there's no doubt about it. In fact, when I my first three years in professional football, I had three different systems. And so I took the first one and I did translation into the next one. <laughs> it can get confusing, brother, let me tell you. It gets lost in translation. Eastern Michigan's done well on third down tonight. Seven for 12 on third and five here. Low and incomplete. And Porter is, is shaken up. He had a man open that he could have just dumped it down quick over the middle. I think it was his first read, and he just, he's holding on to the football, and he's not seeing what he needs to see right now. Instead, went to new plow, and incomplete pass brings up fourth down. And I'm gonna also add on that, you know, Brogan Roback is their returning starting quarterback. The junior was suspended, and it's an indefinite type suspension. He's missed these first two games, and so they put a lot on Porter early. Saw Arian Penton. Going off the field for Mizzou, and he seemed to be a bit banged up as well. That would be a big loss to this defense. He is their top cover man. Third straight three and out for Eastern Michigan. We know what Jonathan Johnson has done tonight. Bumble. He lost the football, and Eastern Michigan appears to have recovered at the Tigers' 45. Yeah, it looked like Brady Hoying is the man who makes the hit, knocks the ball loose. The question is, did it come out before he hit the ground or not? Chris Oriski recovered it, number 58. This is called a fumble on the field. There's the hit by Hoying. Where is that football? And when does it come out? Looks it like looks he was like down, he's down to me. Yeah, looks like he came you down on his back. Yeah, you can't really see it. It disappears under his left arm, but he definitely hits the ground when that ball pops out. It's but it's going to be stopped, and it is being stopped right now. And we just had a chat with Ron Leatherwood, the replay really, official at the, the half. Field was a recovered by the kicking team. The previous plays on the But rear. is there enough? Indisputable. Visit, indisputable. Is it indisputable that he's down? Now, take it a couple different looks at it, and, and 
I think he was down before the ball pops out on the looks that I've seen thus far. Yeah, you be the judge. You can't see the football here. Now it pops out and I believe that that one popped out when he hit the ground. Uh, there's nothing I can see. It's telling me that ball is out before it hits the ground. So I think they will overturn this. It looked to me like he had. I believe it was the force of the ground that popped that football out. There's no visual ev evidence uh, to the contrary. However, it was called a fumble on the field, and so the standard is to prove that it wasn't. Which can make all the difference in the world right. here. And again, we're, we're, we're screened by his body going to the ground, but I think that's enough there. It doesn't look like it starts to pop out until that exactly. back has hit the ground. And even if he didn't have the arm all the way around it, it was still pinned to his body by the, the face mask of the defender, Ahoy. There on the left, we saw George Raniger, who's the communicator for replay official Ron Leatherwood. Yeah, both of these gentlemen spent 25 years in the SEC. Uh, the replay official, Ron Leatherwood, is the second year in the booth. Meanwhile, George Raniger has been in the booth for six years. So we're dealing with some pretty experienced fellas. And they also can uh, contact and are in contact with the video center in Birmingham where they have three officials on hand to discuss things with them as well. Well. Let's see which way this goes. It's tough. It's a tough call. You can't see the football and that's why it, you know it's it may a not point flip to you and it I right may not now. be indisputable then let's find out. The ruling on the field stands first mm -hmm. down. Yeah. First they did not have indisputable video evidence that that ball wasn't out. And so again you, you hit a nail on the head Mark that the call on the field it becomes what you need to prove or not. And you cannot prove that he has possession of the football on those looks. If the call on the field had been the opposite way it would have stood that way as well. I don't I think there's any so. question. So a break for EMU. Let's see if they can take advantage of it here. The pass is swung out. Bailey broke one tackle gets across the 40. Inside the 40, they're going to mark him out right about there to the catch by Sergio Bailey. Here's an amazing stat. Uh, Eastern Michigan made a living last week throwing to their tight ends. They have not completed a pass to a tight end yet here tonight. Which, which means we haven't seen 6 7 Nigel Kilby with a catch either. Uh, so I dropped one earlier, but they haven't really targeted those guys as much. And I'm surprised because they, they really had a lot of success with it, particularly in the when you get a one on one matchup against a 6 7 Kilby and then also on the, the quick underneath stuff. Porter can get the ball out of his hands quickly. Eastern Michigan with a third down and two. This may be a spot in the field Ray if they don't make it here. Yeah, I think they're in four down territory and, and also on the scoreboard. You got to do something. Erickson. Makes it a moot point. He should have the first down there to the 35. Josh Augusta, big number 97. Good credit for the tackle. I haven't seen Mr. Augusta get a chance to carry the football tonight. That's always fun. He got to carry West Virginia last weekend. Yeah, we, we kind of were joking in the meeting and referred to him as the fridge. And they said, well, he's bigger <laughs> than the fridge. So what do we got? The freezer out here? Out of Peoria, Illinois, Peoria High School. That is a reverse pass. It's going to throw back to Porter, who dropped it. That was a lateral, though. So that, uh, Porter, that was two laterals. Yeah, double lateral. I don't think they intended to do that. And it winds up losing yardage, losing about six. Nice uh, work by, and here, here's where the ball is coming, but they're, they're going to throw it back. That's Isaac Holder. And he fakes downfield, comes back. He throws a lateral back to the quarterback, Todd Porter. However, uh, Augustus was right there on the spot. They did not fool the big, fr the, the freezer, the big guy at all. Well, everybody knows the rule. You can only throw one forward pass, but I guess you can throw as many oh, laterals as you want. Rugby, uh, if you want. <laughs> Porter taking a shot down the sideline. The nice adjustment in the catch. Finally hits a tight end. Dan Bushman. 
Well covered by Thomas Wilson, but it's a first down. Looks like it's going to be close to first and goal. And Wilson got beat initially, and then it, he's playing catch up, and he never does get his head back around to find the football. He caught up, but he didn't find the ball. Gain of 31, first and goal. Hard hit, but this is a great decision by Todd Porter. He pulled the string back because he saw pressure coming. Uh, both uh, Thomas Wilson and Spencer Williams were there for Mizzou, so he just tucked it back down and took off running. That, that's a good play. And it's in many ways incredible to see Todd Porter carrying the football as efficiently as he has and effectively after he just looked like a complete novice doing that a week ago. Last week he looked like a fish out of water carrying a football. He is vastly improved this week. Two tight ends. Fade to the end zone. Diving attempt. Did he hang on? Yes. Touchdown Sergio Bailey. That is a great throw first off and then Bailey's ability to adjust lay out and make the grab and hang on to it that's outstanding football right there this is the best throw of the night for Todd Porter in my opinion he gets it right where it has to be and then how about the effort uh, Sergio Bailey just getting the separation late and then laying out and pulling this thing in gets his hands underneath it does the ball move Ooh. Yeah, the ball moves. Yeah. They're going to look at that one, too. Yeah, I because think this if, if the ball hits the ground and it's in your hands, that's fine as long as the ball does not move. That ball moved. We're going to have to go upstairs again. Well, it's, and that's what they're waiting for right now. And it's going to sound like a broken record here. The call on the field is touchdown. Is there indisputable really video proof of what we just saw just touchdown. one time through? Can I see it again? We'll see. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I but, don't know. I'm starting to dispute my own indisputables. <laughs> well, it was a terrific effort. No question about that by Bailey. Right, and the key is, does the ball hit the ground? And the answer is yes. It's going to hit the ground there, and then it moves. And, and my understanding, even though his hands well, were under it. Wait a minute now. Well, see, it's all opinion <laughs> at this point. And that, that, that becomes the issue, and that's what pe why people get upset. I know I do on occasion. Did he get the hand underneath? And, that, I, and, I, that, and on the previous replay, I didn't see the ball move as much as I thought as I did with the first replay. But as I'm, much? As it, much. Yeah, but, right. But, if it moves, but it it's moves. still right. Right? It, it'd be a shame, and we'll find out what it is. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. <laughs> Touchdown. Okay. <laughs> Apparently that, that not much was just, yeah. just enough, right? Because <laughs> that ball did move. Um, I, my... My feeling is he, they had the, he had the hands underneath it, and they couldn't really de determine, uh, at least indisputably, that that was not a catch. So, folks at home, start disputing. If you think you want to be a <laughs> yeah. a video replay person, good luck. Yeah, it, it's not as easy as it seems. Well, Eastern Michigan is able to take advantage of the Mizzou turnover, which stood Excuse somewhat me. controversially. And this goes as a tremendous catch for Bailey. It holds up, and it's 33-14. Tiger fans happy to have football back. The 2016 home opener and Mizzou leading 33-14. Eastern Michigan is picking up their second score of the game. You know, in our conversations with officials, Ray, they have told us repeatedly the hardest call nowadays to make is catch, no catch. Right, and it's all, also the most often one, the, the, the com most common one that they have to determine. And we were at our seminar a month or so ago, and they showed several plays, and the room was divided 50-50 on the call. So it's, it's not a thing that is cut and dry necessarily. So Marie Crockett, the freshman on the return. The SEC ESPN Network grants you an all-access pass to Gator football for their second game of the season against Kentucky. You'll get never-before-seen footage and sounds from pregame to postgame. SEC inside Kentucky against Florida, 7 Eastern Wednesday, also streaming live on the ESPN app. And watch ESPN, and especially if you're a Florida fan, you'll enjoy watching that since they thumped the Cats pretty good today. Was it 45-7? I believe it was. All right, Drew Locke with another opportunity. 
Swings it out a little too high for Witter incomplete. And that's the first time that Drew Locke has, has made a poor throw on a short throw. And, and he just he tried to touch it up just a little too much. And one of my criticisms on him from week one is we have an injured eagle on the field. Uh, I thought he threw too many fastballs. Um, sometimes uh, you got to take a little bit off of it and touch it up a little bit. And they tried to do so there. And, and that'll, you know, he'll get that. It's, it's part of the maturation of a young quarterback. But boy, does he have the tools. Well, you can see they have the number on the front yeah, of the that's helmet. Rock that's 51, Rockwall. Kyle Rockwall. Impressive redshirt sophomore. Got a team high 10 tackles last week in their win over Mississippi Valley State. And he's up under his own power. Another Michigan native. Look at this Eastern Michigan roster. They have 38 players from the state of Michigan. The next closest is 16 players from the state of Ohio. Rockwall with seven tackles credited thus far on the night. I haven't heard or seen much from Pat O'Connor lately in this ballgame. Straight ahead winner finds a crease comes to the near side tripped up at the 32 close to the first down Juan Geraldo. And now Witter's slow to get up and during the last break you know we showed you that Arian Pinton the starting cornerback for Mizzou was shaken up he has gone back to the Tigers locker room but now Witter up on under his own power but definitely with a little hitch. <coughs> Right at the end of the play, he gets the helmet on the elbow. And it came down on that elbow, too. And Augustus is in the, the big fridge back. On third and short, and his second carry of the year, first of the night. It's almost impossible to stop that big fella, 355 pounds. His teammates call him the juggernaut. <laughs> You can see why and he, he's just going to take that quick little dive handoff. They got great push in front of him and then he puts he gets a little push behind them. I don't think they're little fits <laughs> <Right>. anywhere <laughs> in there somehow dancing around. This is Crockett the freshman. Some he, power there. Absolutely. He's up near the marker after a nine yard gain. Ran right over Dion Dawson who is no small guy himself at 351 pounds. Right back to the freshman who will Barrel his way forward up to the 49. Mizzou first down. Pick up of about six. He's playing a little bully ball now. Doubled both defensive tackles and just ran it right up the gut. Lock, time to go deep, taking his shot. Wingo! Number two tonight. For Ray Wingo, and we see another accurate deep shot from the quarterback, Drew Locke. And the key again, Mark, is getting a little air under that football. It, it had been, you know, two, two straight line early on in the ball game, and then even last week. That was the issue, and now he's putting a little more air under it, and you can see it makes all the difference in the world. First touchdown of the night for Wingo, but his second long reception. So he now has three catches for 125 yards for Wingo and the touchdown. And the extra point is up and good for Tucker McCann. The deep ball is evolving tonight for Drew Locke, Ray Bentley. And he is throwing strikes down the field, getting the air under, dropping it into the basket. It's 40 to 14 now. The Tigers, they're hungry. All right, thanks very much. They're revving it up at the racetrack in Bristol. Zoo offense revving things up here. They're up 40-14. Just under nine minutes to go in the third quarter. Good night for Ray Wingo. For that touchdown reception. Pretty good average going. Three catches, 125 yards. Take a knee and 
Let's take a look at that Ray Wingo touchdown catch moments ago. Well, here, here's Wingo, and he's just going to wing it on down the field. But I want you to watch the arc that Drew Locke puts on this football. He gets it up in the air, and that, that smooths out the timing and lets his receiver run under it. And Drew Locke has grown up tonight before our very eyes. He's three of six on deep balls for two touchdowns and 156 yards. People will take that. Hey. And for you, deep balls is anything that's going over the top. Yeah, I mean, anytime you try to take the top off the defense, even if you're inside the red zone, you try to take the top off it. I call that a deep ball. It's all relative, of course. Todd Porter in that Eastern Michigan offense. Well, he wanted to hand off, but the defender was right there, so he did not give it to Erickson and Marcel Frazier. Able to make the tackle for close to no gain. Porter a little slow getting up on that one. He's taking his fair share of, of, of punishment tonight. Eight carries, 37 yards for Todd Porter. Porter comes to Bailey. Sergio Bailey out of bounds. At the 32, he'll be about three yards short of the first down. Good timing on that throw. Uh, it, you know, the, the thing I, I say about a lot of young quarterbacks, they're late with throws. The Porter's had that issue. Drew Locke had that issue, although he cleaned it up pretty good tonight. The Porter was right on time with that one. Third and three. Eagles tonight, 8 of 14 on third down. In the slot, there at the bottom part of the screen is the 6'7 tight end number 82, Nigel Kilby. As he look in his direction, look left, and has that ball batted down by Marcel Frazier. Marcel Frazier's had a really nice game. Fifth-year senior. Forced an interception earlier with a uh, pressure on a quarterback, and now he bats a ball away. Jonathan Johnson coming out to receive this punt. He's had a very impressive night with a 54-yard punt return for touchdown in the first half. I would kick it as far away from him <laughs> as I possibly could. It probably is on the agenda. Angles it to the far side and will hop out of bounds. At about the Mizzou 33 yard line and a late flag flies in there at the end. A couple of guys scuffling. 35 yard punt with no return that time. Didn't get the bounce that he wanted. Holding number seven return team. 10 yard penalty from the end of the kick. First down, Missouri. So that'll cost the Tigers 10 yards. Well, Drew Locke's going to come back out. Of course, working with new offensive coordinator Josh Heupel. Alex Cordry is down on the field for us. And Alex, what's the kind of feeling you get of that developing relationship between offensive coordinator and starting quarterback? Yeah, it's really cool. Ever since new offensive coordinator Josh Heupel got here to Missouri in January, they clicked right away. Of course, Heupel was a former quarterback, so easy for him to understand, you know, what Drew Locke is going through right now. Guys? Ooh, right off the fingertips of Jason Reese. That was close to a long gainer. Thanks very much, Alex. You know, that, and, and also what Josh Heupel told us yesterday, he said, what you got to keep in mind is when Drew Locke was in high school, he was such a good basketball player that when football season ended, he played basketball and right. really didn't work on football. He's a guy who could have played Division One basketball, could have played it here at Mizzou. Right. Wichita State offered him as well. Yeah. And Oklahoma. And, and the, the way, you know, he's an exception in this day and age of, of athletics, high school in particular. Kids, uh, they hone in on one sport so much earlier. They prefer they play different sports. I think it's all about competing and, and becoming well-rounded. Lock started to roll out, stops, throws deep, an adjustment made late, a flag, and the catch still made. I think they're going to get Jalen Phelps again on a, on a pass interference. The true freshman's getting a lesson tonight. No doubt he had wrapped up Hall before the ball got there, but Paul's 
Hall still wrapped up the catch. And another great deep throw from Drew Locke. 48 yard gain with the catch by Hall. Pass interference. Defense number 12. That penalty is declined. Result of the play is a first down. You know, this one he got up in the air, under threw it a little bit, but that's still, your receiver has a better chance because he knows he's looking at the flight of the ball. The defender, that's the last thing he does is try to find the football. And if you get beat, you're going to try to grab a guy, and that's what we saw. First down, Mizzou at the Eastern Michigan 24. Lock, look left, look right. Now rolls out, throws deep to the end zone, and the corner too high and out of bounds. That time in the direction of Kendall Blanton. Yeah, they had set up a, a, a fake bubble screen. Yeah, they've been throwing that bubble screen out to the edge all night. So Lock looked at it. Those guys that, that came down the field, Reese and the other receiver, they, they gave a little fake like they were going to come out and block and then took off. It'd be an effective play. And off and Crockett has the turf mate to tackle that time. He was yeah. trying to sidestep and go lateral and that. The old turf monster makes yeah. an appearance, huh? But do you like what you see from that I freshman do. Crockett? I, I do. I like what I saw from him last week aside from that fumble, but he's ex he's explosive. He's big. Uh, he can handle himself and pass protection. He's got it all. He's going to be a good one. Pass caught at the 13 and quickly. Offended there is Jamon Moore. Only the second catch of Moore on the night. But this is the fastball that Locke throws. The quick, short release. That, I mean, that's textbook. That's why everyone was in so in love with him, and he was the number six quarterback in the nation coming out of high school. Taking his shot, Blanton got it. Touchdown, Kendall Blanton. He's a H back coming out of the backfield. He actually got tripped and knocked down by Ike Spearman. Got himself back up and got open. About Locke hanging in there on the play action too, and keeping his eyes down the field, and touched that one up perfectly. Fourth touchdown pass of the night for Drew Locke. Make that five starting to become hard to keep track of. Tucker McCann for the point after. And that is through and good. A little trauma? No. <laughs> a little wobbly, but it was accurate. Well, here's Blanton right here. He's kind of hidden down underneath that. And Spearman, the linebacker, is going to trip him up. Boom, right there. He goes down, but he pops back up. And the coverage is lost at that point, And things get pretty easy when nobody covers you. 47-14. Well, the mantra this year for Mizzou football is show me, which is, of course, the state slogan for the state of Missouri. But what Barry Odom told us was, hey, it's my football team, our football team that needs to show our fans in the state of Missouri something. They're doing that tonight, right? They sure are. And a lot of it goes, the credit should go to the shoulders of Drew Locke. Been outstanding tonight, completing 69% of his throws. Five touchdown passes tonight for Drew Locke. Let's check in with the studio and Darinoka. Sorry, right, thank you. That is about as exciting a run as you can see. Yeah, that's one of those where the coach is going, no, 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 no. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Erickson powers his way for about four up to the 29. A lot of load on Ian Erickson tonight. They're starting running back Shaq Van just one carry before he got injured and had to depart the game. And that is completely, I'm sure, throwing things out of whack for Eastern Michigan tonight on the ground. Yeah, without a doubt, 20 carries on the night for Erickson. They had 12 last week. And it was Shaq Van who had 20. Porter far side. Only going to gain to about the 33 for Isaiah Fuller and defender John Gibson right on him. Yeah, 
Gibson was, was right there to make the play, but Todd Porter has a little bit of an arm as there's a flag, flags, a couple flags down on the field now. But I still think Porter's a, a tick late with those throws. Personal foul, hands to the, hands face. To the face, defense number 79, 15-yard penalty from the end of the run, automatic first down. That is assessed on Terry Beckner. Yeah, right defensive tackle. Got his hands up into the face mask of an offensive lineman. I'm surprised that doesn't happen more often with the way guys use their hands and uh, trying to manipulate people. It was really a, almost a head slap uh, more than anything. With the penalty, Eastern Michigan first down at their own 49. Porter moves under center. Takes the handoff and has his man wide open at the 29 yard line. And stepping out of bounds is Sam Browning. Maybe some confusion in that backfield. Cam Hilton and Logan Cheadle are, are in there now. A couple of backups as, as Penton was injured earlier. Coming to the near side this time. And Isaac Holder run out of bounds by Logan Cheadle. And Cheadle's the man who has stepped into the ball game for Penton. And if I'm Eastern Michigan, I'm going to find out if Mr. Cheadle can cover. Handed off, running left. Greg Turner. Turner trying to turn that corner on Cam Hilton. Hilton able to get him by the shirt tail. Get him out of bounds at about the 14. For an eight-yard game. And a first down in Eastern Michigan moving the ball smartly on this drive. Clock running, just over four minutes to play in the third quarter here in Columbia. And they have found the tight ends that have the Eagles here in these last two drives, and it's made a difference in, in the way they've been able to move the football. Fake the jet sweep to Sexton, but Porter swallowed up at the 15. Actually, uh, Erickson in yep. there in the Wildcat again. Which in Michigan trying to mix things up in the red zone. And they've run that Wildcat with Erickson a handful of times tonight. You got it going again. Take the jet sweep again. Erickson keeps it once again running left, and he is undercut by Cam Hilton, who says, I got you this time, big boy. Yeah, Cam Hilton, the sophomore, is. In now for Thomas Wilson. He's come up, made a couple of nice little hits. He's kind of playing center field on this deal against that Wildcat. There's really not much a threat of a pass. So he moved up to eight yards from the line of scrimmage and played a really deep linebacker. And there's nobody to block him. Todd Porter comes back in at quarterback with a third and nine. Porter looking, finds his target inside the five and down there after the reception by Matthew Sexton. Sexton, a true freshman on this ball club, also that they expect great things out of. And good timing on that route. Uh, I still think it was a tick late, but it was earlier than he has been, and that's why uh, Porter was able to complete that one. He's only going to get better as they go back to that Wildcat package. See Missouri bringing in the bigger boys late, including the big guy. Now they've moved out of the Wildcat. Now he's up under center. First and goal from inside the five. Porter is going to be able to run it in himself. That naked boot we saw earlier. And that what they did this time is they had a, the tight end rather than block the edge man. He goes downfield and the coverage has to be there so there's nobody left home. Now the touchdown run for the quarterback, Todd Porter, from five yards out. Paul Furcado, the redshirt freshman from Rochester, New York. On for the point after. That is true, and it's 47-21. 
Missouri 47. Celebrating its 12th year, sponsoring the Good Hands Field Goal Nets. Allstate makes contributions to participating universities, general scholarship funds for each field goal, and extra point kick. Since 2005, Allstate has donated millions in scholarship funds. It is a 47-21 lead for Missouri and Eastern Michigan able to respond how inside the red well, zone? Well, you got your tight end Bushman here, and then you, you've got the coverage linebacker, Donovan Newsom. It's an arc release, so Newsom's kind of caught between a rock and a hard spot. He has coverage, but he also has contain, and the naked boot was the perfect call to exploit that, that uh, conflict that the defender Newsom had to deal with. Jonathan Johnson back deep. He's to the right of your screen. Marie Crockett there on the left. Going to kick it in the direction of Crockett from the three. Three freshman hits the 25 and knocked down there at the 28. Return 22 yards by Crockett. It's going to bring out Drew Locke, who has an opportunity to set a Mizzou record. He has already tied now tonight the Mizzou record for most touchdown passes in a single game with five. Tied Chase Daniel and also Matty Mock. Not bad company. But the way he's thrown the deep ball tonight has really been the difference between the Drew Locke we saw last week against West Virginia and then here this evening. He's found that thing. Ishwitter for a couple up near the 30. Alex Ross was banked up early for Mizzou, so we didn't see much of him. We've seen Witter tonight. We've seen Crockett. We've yet to see Nate Strong. We thought there was a chance we could see him make his Tigers debut. And we may just yet. Yeah, still quite a bit of time left in this game. Just under two minutes to go, third quarter. And the tempo continues. Uh, this Missouri attack is relentless in terms of how fast and how many plays they run. Black far side off the hands of Demetrius Mason. Well, the question is going to be raised, especially when you get into SEC play. Where do you balance this no huddle up tempo offense? to kind of help out your defense because if you have too many three and outs, and this was the, the case at the beginning of the game last week in right. West Virginia for Mizzou, when do you shift out a little bit? You know, I, I played with the Buffalo Bills when Jim Kelly was running the K-gun back in the day, and, and there's really, if you're going to commit to that, that's your speed. That's what you're going to do. So your defense is just going to have to live with it and suck it up and, and get out there and, and play. And now they got gassed early in that game, but, you know, you got to rotate guys, develop your depth, and that's how you get out of it. Next Saturday, the SEC Nation pregame show will break down everything from the gridiron to the grill for week three SEC Nation presented by Regents Bank next Saturday at 10 a.m. Eastern right here on the SEC ESPN Network and also streaming live on the ESPN app and watch ESPN. You know, well, the zoo ran 100 plays. They have run 51 tonight. 51 tonight with a little over a quarter left. Not, not as, uh, I guess, furious of a tempo, but part of that is what your opponent's doing, too. Are, are they able to control the, the ball a little bit? And Eastern, if they've done anything, they have had their share of, of possession time. Yeah, part of the equation was last week West Virginia running up tempo. They ran 85 plays, <laughs> which allowed Mizzou to run 100. Pass near side. Bailey hit right as he made the catch. Then bumped back, tried to retrace his steps. Logan Cheadle there with the hit. It'll go as a gain of five. Haven't seen a, a deep shot from Eastern lately. They did. They caught the tight end Browning on a, a deep crossing route in the last time they had the football. But it, just a straight up fly route. Haven't seen much of that. And the safeties from Mizzou are creeping up. Tigers rush five, Porter deflected that still finds itself into the hands of Newplow. 
Gibson rides him all the way up to the 40 and a long gainer for Eastern Michigan in the Mizzou territory of 26 yards. When I saw Newplow initially, I thought, okay, that's a pretty big tight end who's pretty fast. <laughs> He's a receiver at six foot, 230 pounds and just strong. A flag, which stops the play and Porter fortunate because Marcel Frazier was already coming around the corner. Offense number 56, five yard penalty, first down. Get the right guard, Jimmy Leah Teoda. And a little frustrating night for Chris yeah. Creighton. It's been tough on him. That's one of the things he had told Alex at halftime. Yeah, it's been frustrating. They've had, well, the first half, they, they killed themselves on several opportunities by making mistakes. And then Missouri got some momentum, and now it's been a bully ball deal. Caught at the 33. Bailey immediately slung down by Logan Cheadle. Giving forward progress up to the 32. That gains back 12, but still leaves him a few yards shy of that first down, and it takes us to the end of the third quarter. That is the end of the third quarter. 2016 home opener for the Missouri Tigers. It's been a big night so far for quarterback Drew Locke. They lead it 47 21 after three. Development is a journey, Ray Bentley, and Drew Locke developing tonight. Yeah, he has journeyed a long ways tonight in terms of throwing the deep ball and getting the timing of the passes. I mean, he's just been outstanding. Here's one of the great examples of it. Hanging it up in the air, letting his receiver, Ray Wingo, run underneath it. And here, another nice one where he puts touch on the football. A lock, 67% completion thus far. 414 yards, a career high, and tied a school record with the five touchdowns. Not too shabby with a quarter to go. We saw our game summary. This was a 14-7 Mizzou lead early in the second quarter, then they exploded. 19 unanswered points. Lead it 47 21. We're into the fourth quarter. Eddie Doherty with the catch there. 17 yard gain. Eastern picking up the pace here. Erickson into the arms of Josh Augusta. And those are some big arms to try to escape from. Yeah, uh, try to run over a refrigerator once and see what that feels like. <laughs> because that's uh, what Josh Augusta, well, I've been calling him the freezer, but yeah, fridge will work. Either way. He's just a, a large human being, let's put it that way. It also tells me something about Ian Erickson. I'm impressed with that kid. He, he's not intimidated at all. He's kind of a bowling ball out there. Yeah, I, as soon as I clicked the film on to watch them in preparation for this game, I was very impressed with Shaq Van and Ian Erickson. The way they run the football and they keep their feet moving. Bad news for Eastern tonight. Shaq Van only one carry before departing with an injury to the end zone. Almost intercepted. It was intended for Sergio Bailey, but the closest was Logan Cheadle who got his hands on there. Well, uh, Bailey had gone out of bounds, so had he caught it, it wouldn't have mattered anyway. Stops the clock with one minute gone here in the fourth quarter. They got Kelby in there, number 82, the big tight end again. And this is the area where he was extremely effective, and they threw the football to him uh, last week in their big win. There he is there moving around. He's over here to the near side. Take the jet sweep to Doherty. Now they go towards Bantam, who got banged hard right as the ball got there, but it's going to be incomplete. Yeah, he may catch this football. In fact, he does, but he lands out of bounds. So there's no force out rule or anything like that. You have to get a foot down. Here coming right at you. You can see the combination route. They tried to run Kelby up the field and then drop it on the wheel route. And that foot oh, actually did get yeah. down. Yeah, wait a minute. But did he, but he was juggling the football a little bit, so. Was he? <laughs> yeah, right? We, we, we've been through this before, have we not? Well, if I'm Eastern, you want to have him take a look at that, I would think, but doesn't look like that's going to be the case. And it's fourth down and nine here. And they're going for it on the Mizzou 14. They called the timeout. In fact, uh, I heard Chris Creighton all the way up here screaming timeout. So he, he made no doubt about it. And he got the timeout before the play clock expired. So we'll step aside as well early in this fourth quarter from Columbia. Okay, okay. 
not a great week last week for the SEC at week one six and six which included a Mizzou 26 11 loss at West Virginia so far SEC perfect right now at five at all you have Arkansas and TCU tied late in the fourth tonight that may find overtime Mizzou leading big here 47 21 though Eastern Michigan going for it on fourth down and nine in the Tigers 14 yard line. Porter looked left, throws right to the end zone. A little contact, but no flag. Hmm. Doherty, the intended receiver. Did you see what I saw? Right. Well, uh, yeah, I did. And early. I cannot believe that that's uh, not a pass interference because Therese Hall put both hands into the chest of the receiver. Well, here you go. There's a nice throw up into the corner. Give your man a chance. There's the contact before the ball's even there. Now, is I, it I mean, I uncatchable? Don't... Well, no. how, how do you know? Because the guy, the receiver got pushed on the way up. Right. Uh, I don't think it was uncatchable, and I, I think they missed that one. So Eastern Michigan, as a result, turns it over on downs. Mike yeah. gives to the freshman Demarie Crockett. Crockett. Jalen Pickett in now at inside linebacker for Eastern makes the tackle. Is starting to sub a little more liberally. Slung out to Demetrius Mason. That Tigers freshman out of bounds across the 20. And you mentioned Jalen Phelps, who's getting a little bit of an education here tonight, but he is, uh, he's been beat deep. Now he's given such a cushion out there. Locke could just play catch all night. Crockett falling forward will have the first down up at the 26 five yard run. Boy, Crockett is very quick laterally. I mean, I, I thought he was going to run the hole on the left side of the line. He ended up on the other side of the center in a blink. Locked far side and reaching for that and coming down with it. Keon DeLosa. That's a world class throw uh, from the far hash to get it to the outside on a rope like that to the spot he put it. Drew Locke has opened my eyes here tonight. I heard a lot of talk about all this talent, but when I watched it on the field, it, did, it wasn't consistent. Well, tonight it has been. To Kendall Blanton. Blanton has found the end zone tonight. Brought down by Jalen Pickett. Kendall Blanton, whose dad Jerry Blanton spent about seven years in the NFL with the Chiefs. They will start their NFL season tomorrow on the west side of the state against the Chargers. NFL football now on the east side of the states. The Rams back in LA. That's juggled but caught by Jonathan Johnson, who's used that juggling and muff thing to his uh, benefit tonight a few times. Right. <laughs> you know, it didn't benefit him that time no. as much, but on that punt return, that wasn't too bad. Put that one in, dribbled the ball a couple times. Johnson has a 54 yard punt return for touchdown tonight. Crockett trying to creep through. Derek Williams had enough of that ankle to slow him up where his teammates were able to come up and finish things off. And Missouri has their second string offensive line. At least second string tackles in the ball game right now. Block out into the flat. Jonathan Johnson tried to spin away, but with enough second effort to get to midfield, which is enough for a first down. Locke just keeps picking them apart, throwing them short darts. It's almost indefensible when he has his timing right. Locke going to take a deep shot. Just off the fingertips of Johnson, who had an opportunity for a third touchdown tonight. He did a little rolls to his right, throws back down the middle. And that one, I, you, you got to lay that thing out there. And the receiver, I, I think you dive for that one, right? Jonathan Johnson, I think he could have caught it. Had Second he left thought, he's probably thinking that would have been a good idea. Oh, somebody not ready there. Wingo, the pass was going to be a screen out to Wingo. Reese also out there. Third down. One of the rare inaccurate passes. It was one of those run pass options. I'm not even sure Wingo expected the football, to be honest. He didn't look like he was ready for it. Oh, 
huge hit. And that's going to bring the flag. Juan Geraldo on Keon DeLosa. The question, obviously, we have a defenseless player, there's no doubt. And DeLosa, DeLosa going up for the football. The question is, was there forcible contact with the crown of the helmet or above the, the neck and shoulder area? And that'll be the key to this call. Personal foul, foul targeting, targeting defense number 32. The previous place on the further review. So automatically reviewed by our replay official Ron Leatherwood, who, along with other replay officials this year, right now has expanded options when they're looking at these plays. Right. They can uh, weigh in on whether the player is defenseless. Every every angle of the deal they can weigh in on. I, I don't know. I, let's take a look at where this kind. It's a shoulder and it's to the the chest. I, God, that's those are those tough ones. To me, that's football. Now, I'm old-fashioned, but I, I, it wasn't a, uh, egregious, as, which is a word they've been using now, a shot to the head, necessarily. I, I thought he hit him in the chest. But it was close. And in the, the way I've seen things go, that's going to be called targeting. Take a look at those, what you need to get the targeting, and, and obviously the ejection that will follow with it, that to me is, is pretty punitive. Well, as you mentioned, he, he was certainly a defenseless player, but after further review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. It's a 15 yard penalty. Number 32 is disqualified. And that, that hurts because that goes into next week as well. will be unavailable for the first half of their game next Saturday at UNC Charlotte. Yeah, and, and Geraldo was uh, playing very well. Possessed early on, yes. For uh, all the tackles tonight. And if it's in doubt, they're gonna they're gonna call targeting, which you know that's that's the the world that we live in now. But I think you're right, Ray. I mean, it looked it like it close, initiated there in the chest, maybe I mean, a little high to the neck, and the neck is included in that. So I'm not gonna argue it. And it was a call that was confirmed. Live. And another opportunity. This one for Demetrius Mason, who had his hands on that. Boy, Lockhead's magic in the pocket, stepping up, avoiding the rush, and then throwing a strike. And that's the first uh, blatant drop I think I've seen tonight. So his receivers, who had multiple drops the week one, have done a better job this week. On third down for Johnson, and that's off his fingertips. You had Colkin out there blocking, but Jason Beck was out there to blow that up as well. Now will be a third down and 10. I thought that was a good throw from Locke. A little bit out in front of Johnson, but that's where you want it. You want to lead that guy upfield a little bit. You see Locke's impressive numbers from tonight's deal and throw now a couple of drops on top of that by his receivers. Brings it out to Crockett's. He gets flipped over shy of the first down by Daquan Pace. Nine yard gain, but it's going to be a couple yards shy of the first down. But on fourth down and with the lead and under 11 minutes to go, fourth quarter, Tigers will go right back up to the line to go for it. Now they're going to run a couple of the big guys out late. Plenty of time on the play clock, but now with all the substitutions. A late, late decision by the coaching staff. They'll take time that one out now. So the Tigers use their first time out of the second half. We'll step aside with ten and a half minutes left, fourth quarter in Columbia. Double OT. Thank you, Dari. Back here in Columbia. Ten and a half minutes to go. Fourth quarter. Mizzou right now up comfort comfortably at 47-21. Going forward on fourth down and short. We got the big boys in. A lot more than the first down for Crockett. He'll find the end zone. 
first collegiate touchdown for the true freshman from Little Rock, DeMarie Crockett. And the big boy, Augusta, got himself a real nice block. Ended up on Jalen Phelps, the, a corner of all things. <laughs> that's your classic mismatch, that's for sure. You're looking at the world's largest decoy right now. Yeah. <laughs> he was a road plow on yeah. that one. But, you know, the hole was so big, he got right through it and ended up blocking a... Uh, one of the smaller guys, a defensive back. That's not fair. Well, if you're Eastern Michigan, you're thinking that you're going to give Augustus the ball. Instead, he's coming at you. <laughs> Clearing the road for the freshman. And that, that's how you clear the road right there. And the extra point for Tucker McCann. Things going a bit better now. I want, to, I want to show you this block. Uh, here's the big boy, Augusta, right behind the pole there. He's going to end up on the corner. Number 12, Jalen Phelps, the true freshman, 165 pounds. He's outweighed by almost 200 pounds, and you see the result. Well, I'm just going to say this. Augusta was kind to him on that play, I thought. It could have been a lot <laughs> uglier. Right? <laughs> oh. Got a little push to this Phelps at the end. <laughs> This is what this needs. A, he needs a red flag hanging out of the, the back of his pocket for the wide load notice. Because that's a big dude who just destroyed. And actually, I, I think you're right, Mark. He, he was a little bit. All the way through the end zone from McCann and a touchback. So he'll come out to the 25 yard line. And I'll tell you. They are going to have so much fun reviewing the film of this game of the short yardage plays and, and watching the, the juggernaut do his thing. As a, as a former player, I can tell you that, that nothing that you have more fun with, especially after a big win, and you roll a guy through like that and he makes plays. It, it's reminiscent of the refrigerator who hit the stage in 1985, part of that Bears team that some think are the best of all time. I think it was the best defense of all time. And, Bridge was a part of that, and he also played a little pullback. Porter running out of time, is able to escape briefly before Joey Burkett comes up to make the hit. They do gain a couple of yards up to the 28. Took a wallop at the end. Uh, feel that one in the morning. Near side into the midst of Browning. It's tackled by John Gibson, number five there, the senior out of the Houston area, Missouri City, Texas. So if you're Eastern Michigan, you have to start wondering about when will the starting quarterback, Brogan Roback, be allowed back on this football team. Was suspended, violated team rules, and has missed the first two ball games. Now Todd Porter has stepped in admirably and led him to a win in their opener. But I, I think when you add the experience of Roback, who's an outstanding dual threat quarterback, this Eastern Michigan offense might be able to move some people around in the Mid-American Conference. That's Sam Browning who made the catch on that last play and is shaken up. Rogan Roback did not make the trip here tonight, as we mentioned, suspended on August 23rd for conduct detrimental to the team with an indefinite suspension handed down by head coach Chris Creighton last year ball around pretty good he, and you would think uh, having another year under his belt that he would lower that number the, the interceptions but you throw for 3,000 yards you, you, you're humming it around the, the yard a little bit Porter finds Isaac Holder Anthony Sherrill's stopped him but with the forward progress he got just enough up to the 35 for an EMU first down. Missouri's got to be happy with uh, if, if nothing else the way Drew Locke has performed here tonight. They got a lot of things to be happy about. Porter finds his man on the far side roped in by Antoine Porter. All the way up inside the Missouri 40. They're going to mark him out at the 38. A mismatch. You had uh, Porter, who was very shifty, on uh, Donovan Newsom, a linebacker. Porter found it, threw a nice touch pass to move the chains. 27 yard gain. Go. 
carries here for Breck Turner since Shaq Van has been out since early in this game. Augusta's back in 97, helping out on the tackle for the Tiger defense. That was one of the criticisms of Missouri coming out of their opener. They didn't, they played, uh, they didn't play a whole lot of nickel, and so that was something that people were looking for. I still haven't seen uh, a true nickel package yet tonight. They run, they roll with the three linebackers. They're confident that Newsom and Burkett, the starters, are able to match in the, in the slots. And you might have to think that one over. Porter with plenty of time goes across the middle and broken up at the very last moment by Demarcus AC. He is a true freshman cornerback getting some playing time and broke that up before it found Matthew Sexton. This is great closing speed by AC to get underneath and get a hand on this. Because initially the receiver had a couple of steps on him. Showed some explosiveness. EMU 10 of 18 tonight on third down. Porter to throw on third and eight comes to a first down catch at the 21 yard line by Isaac Holder. This is all good reps for Todd Porter. Just an opportunity to build on the timing. To me, that's the, the number one thing. If he can get that ball out of his hands that split second quicker, it's going to have a lot more open receivers, and uh, those balls won't be contested as much. Porter taking a shot towards the end zone, but his receiver had cut that route off, Bushman, and it sailed well over his head. A.J. Logan, though, was pressuring Todd Porter. Yeah, That's why Porter, he put it up. He threw that one away. There's no doubt about it. You see Porter's numbers on the day. And that's, it's not a horrible football game. You know, they, he only threw it 22 times last week. I don't think they wanted him throwing the ball 40 plus times. Just couldn't get it going running enough. Porter goes in the direction. AC again breaking that one up, intended for Doherty. AC's quick as, as that's a guy I've seen. He's got great explosion out of his break and closing speed. He's outstanding. And that's that's good depth. It's a great opportunity for Missouri to get some of these younger guys in here and get them game reps. Not only to, to get them in the experience, but to build the morale. When more guys play, more guys are, are bought in, and, and it means more to them, and that's, that's what you want. They're taking advantage of it. Mizzou starts SEC play here at Faroe Field next Saturday against Georgia. Draw play, Porter. Stood up just inside the 20. My cross, defensive coordinator, first year here in Missouri. Worked with Coach Odom in the past. And, yeah, I enjoyed uh, our chat with him. He was upbeat. Honest and, and you know, took, took some things on himself. And I think he's a good one. And I'm anxious to see him grow into that position. And he couldn't have a better mentor than Barry Oda. Porter got him jump, but did he get the playoff in time? That's the question. Delay game, offense, five yard penalty. Remains fourth down. Porter hit himself in the head over that one. He, he knows that's on him. He can, you know, that, that play clock's right there in his field of vision. He's just got to keep an eye on that. Sometimes you don't have enough eyes as a quarterback. So it's going to extend that fourth down out to a fourth and 13, and they're going to bring out the field goal unit. First field goal attempt we've seen tonight. Paul Fricano comes on. He's one of two in field goal attempts last week, made from 35, missed from 49. It's just inside the left hash. 42-yard attempt. Kick is away, but will go just left. He missed it. And it remains 54-21. 6-12 to go here in the fourth quarter. Tiger offense headed back out.
Zoo's mascot, Truman the Tiger, apparently celebrated a birthday here tonight. Happy birthday, Truman. How'd that costume fit you back when you went to this school? Is that? <laughs> this is the game right here. Brent Jesse will be at that one. Georgia at Missouri. Missouri's going to find some things out. See if tonight was just a uh, fact that they ran up against a weaker opponent, or can they go? Can they can they play with a, a Georgia? Demetrius Mason. Again, yeah. but I, I like this game up top here too. That's not going to be a bad one, but I prefer to listen to, to Brent and Jesse. As a matter of fact, It'll be a good game here at Perot Field. Marvin Sanders in the game for the first time. Tigers keep it on the ground, and we get a look at Nate Strong, his first ever carry as a Mizzou running back. This has been a bit of a long story for the East St. Louis native. He's qualified academically and has picked up his first carry for the Tigers. He could impact this team before this year's over. Pulled down by Pat O'Connor. We haven't said Pat's name a ton tonight, not as much as I thought we would. Oh, and that's why you want to give a lot of credit to the offensive line of the Missouri Tigers as you see the information on Nate Strong. But the tackles today for Missouri did an outstanding job. Paul Adams, number 77, making just his third career start. I thought he played better than any of their other linemen in the opener last week. And then Tyler Howell, the left tackle, making his third start, a transfer from Butler JC. And those guys stood up really well tonight against some good competition. Sanders was looking to throw downfield, but couldn't find anybody open. He runs out of bounds at the 48. Here's a chance. We, we saw what Drew Locke did tonight in developing his game. I think Mizzou fans would like to see the passing game develop for Marvin Sanders, at least have him be more of a potential threat to Without throw the ball. Without a doubt. In the game last week against West Virginia, he threw two passes. Both of them were bubble screens. He's got to have the threat of throwing the football down the field. And he finds his target, Demetrius Mason, pulled down at the 40 by Ross Williams. And, uh, you know, I, I'm a little surprised, but not really, because I, I thought it disrupted their offense last week when they brought Xanders in in the middle of drives uh, a couple of times. And I think it threw Drew Locke off a little bit, and they stuck with Locke all night tonight. And I thought that's a, a good decision by Coach Odom and, and Josh Heupel. Sanders chased on third down, uses that speed, Tip toes down the sideline, but they're going to mark him out right near the line of scrimmage at the 40, and it'll be fourth yeah. down. you got to learn to tuck that ball away a little bit quicker when he does decide to run because you don't want to carry it out there like a loaf of bread. And he does, he ends up losing it. Oh, he, he did lose the well, football. Well, but he had stepped out of bounds just prior, which is fortunate for him, but that's what I'm talking about, tucking that ball away. Well, everything you just mentioned tonight about the playing of Drew Locke. Uh, actions speak louder than words, but I think if the Missouri coaching staff w says it out loud, it would be priority number one tonight was to have Drew Locke make progress and be ready for the start of conference play next weekend. Without a doubt, and that's, I believe, led to that decision not to use Xanders at all until here in mop-up time. What a perfect bounce. Nice punt by Corey Fatoni. He got the hop at the one. It stayed and is down at about the three. Just 341 left. Sorry, we did feel that. How about that? Another win for the SEC. 6-0 here uh, in the second. We all, everybody who was heading for the hills, you can come <laughs> on back now. Third time tonight, Eastern Michigan has started to drive inside their own five-yard line, and Rex has got to be careful. Yeah, you don't want to be running sideways down in the shadow of your own end zone there. You'll see the, the line right down the end line here, or the goal line, I should say. And very close. He could have got thrown back in there. I don't think it would have been a safety. I think the, where, the, where his momentum had stopped, he'd still been out in the field of play. But you don't want to run sideways down here. Houston goes to a couple of tight ends. Black running with three minutes to go. Cut. 
Porter has a defender right in his face, oh. and he threw it directly to the Mizzou defender, Joey Burkett, who gets the easy touchdown. Well, it was Terry Beckner Jr. We've been talking about him, and he's coming off of that knee injury. He has a great job swimming the center, and he is in Porter's face before he knows what's happening. And then Burkett gets one of them birthday presents. I don't know if it's his birthday or not, but <laughs> he'll take it. I promise you that. Now the touchdown for the redshirt junior from Jefferson City, Joey Burkett. And Mizzou has hit the 60-point mark with the extra point coming. For Tucker McCann. Burkett's filling some big shoes. Uh, Kentrell Brothers is now in the NFL. Led the nation in tackles in that position last year. Yeah, had 152 tackles. Watch this guy, the nose tackle. That spin move is, is what got it done. He, sw he swam the center, and he is on top of the quarterback before he can th even think about dropping it. He was going to – he tried to look him off and then come back to a screen over the middle. But uh, too late because the big guy, Beckner Jr., is in there. You know, Morris – more reps tonight for Beckner. He tears his ACL, the right ACL, in the game against BYU in Kansas City on November 14th. Shortly after that, has the surgery, got in the game at West Virginia. And when we talked with Coach Odom about Beckner, Coach Odom said, hey, you, you should see Beckner more because game one, when you come back from an injury like that, is just I've facing the live action yes. and being confident that that injury is healed. Right. Yeah, I've been through that, uh, coming back from an ACL injury, and, and you do have some serious doubts. Uh, am I going to be able to withstand this? You've been able to do everything up to that point, but the live action is a whole nother level, and Beckner cer certainly is... Uh, Shown that he is healthy and ready to roll. Freshman All-American back in uh, his first season. Well, he was a big uh, get for D-line U here. Of course, they, they no longer have Craig Kuligoski, the D-line coach, who left to go to Miami with Mark Rick. But they do have Jackie Ship, a guy who's in his first year here, obviously, but has had a lot of experience in that department. Coming up Tuesday, 9 o'clock Eastern time. It's our next SEC story presented by Chick-fil-A. The story behind Florida's 2006 and 2007 back-to-back -back national championship basketball teams. They were the first, most likely the last team to start the same five players in both title games. That also will stream live on the ESPN app and watch ESPN. Yeah, I think that probably will be the last time. The way the one and dones are in college basketball. Porter keeps, and he is wrapped up. Josh Moore comes in off the edge. In fact, uh, Coach Cross, Damani Cross, uh, defensive coordinator, we asked him, is there someone else, Coach, that isn't on your too deep that might get in this ball game that we should know about? And that was the guy he mentioned, Josh Moore. Josh Moore just stepped in and showed you why he earned that playing time. Dropped. That was right in the belly. Yeah, Matthew Sexton uh, has caught a ball earlier here tonight, and that one will haunt him. That, that, that's one of them nightmare drops because uh, you can't throw the ball any better. Hit him in a bad spot, the, the hands. Third and ten. Well, you and I have seen a lot of Mac football over the years. Eastern Michigan did not win a Mac game last year. We're just 1-11. This, to me, doesn't look like a team that's going to go winless in the MAC this year. They no, look I, improved. I think I agree 100%. And, and then, of course, the X factor is when Brogan Roback gets back, if he does, anyway. If not, though, I think Todd Porter is developing, and he's he's going to be a good quarterback by the time this thing's over. He's going to get his timing up just a half a tick. Could have made a lot of difference in contested throws. Five straight incomplete passes from Porter. Eagles to punt. That is taken right near the sideline, but now 
says Hines. And they have two number ones. Anthony That's Hines Black. and Chris Black. And well, so you, it's hard to determine the reason special I, teams. And I didn't think they'd have Black in the game this late either. That's That that was the thing that was confused me because we haven't seen Black much all night tonight, which has been a surprise. A quiet night for him, but they decided to give him a little love. And there is a flag down on the field, but that, that's pretty good open field running there by Chris Black, the transfer from Alabama. He's a guy that at the end of the West Virginia game was really finding his stride, and I thought this would be somebody we'd see get more attention tonight from a wide receiver standpoint for Mizzou, and he kind of fell off the radar. I tell him we see him out there like, is that really Chris Black? Yeah. It's late in the game, returning a punt. The kicking team had two number ones. That's a five-yard penalty from the previous spot. We and now you understand our confusion. Yeah, so Anthony Hines was on the field. <laughs> yeah. uh, your, uh, your job is tough, brother, when they're throwing <laughs> double numbers out on the same time. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And they do this in college football, and it kind of drives me crazy because you'll have, uh, I'm looking down the roster, and I've got three number threes, two number ones. We two number ones. You know, just all the way through, and what they do is they'll divide it offense, defense. But when you get special teams, you know, somebody said, hey, let's let Chris Black return on one of them punts. But they forgot that the other number one, Anthony Hines, was on the punt return team. So you got to keep track of them numbers. And it caused confusion all over, including up here in the booth. <laughs> and that's... <laughs> What happens when you got two number ones on the field? Well, you had a 50-50 chance to get it right. <laughs> <laughs> but had there not been two number ones on the field, the number one that caught the football in the return, Chris Black had a very nice return that's now going to be nullified. And we'll punt it again. Yep, man. we'll do it all over again. And How many number ones we got on the field here? I, I think we have just one, and that's Chris Black, who's standing back at the Mizzou 30 to receive this punt. Another shot at it. And Anthony Hines is over on the sideline, so this will be a legal play. All right. Austin Barnes punt angled to the near side. Black takes it at the 15. Immediately a flag comes out for a push in the back. And Black's return will come out towards the 25, but push in the back will cause Mizzou. Yeah, that's Christian Holmes who was trying to get his block. And I, I just, I, can we uh, be honest here? I've never clipped anybody in my life, believe it or <laughs> oh. not. All right. Okay. How, do you, uh, how do you do that? I, I just don't understand how you hit a guy in the back. You know it's illegal, right? And you know you're hitting him in the, him in the back. You what, just what possesses can't. you to do that? That's the old coach in me. You that, never I got just, caught in... Never did it. Uh, it football. wasn't even about getting caught. Not not clipping. And that's because I never played on any returns. I never oh, had an opportunity. Right. Okay. So. <laughs> so. Truth must be told. During the return, the legal block in the back. Receiving team, 21. Half the distance to the goal. First down. Well, it happens at all levels all the time. And every time we say the same thing, what you just said. Yeah. Wow. How can you do it? Here it is right here. What, what do you think? You got his front at all? <laughs> no. Leave him go. It's hard to do. Harder than, than apparently we think. Christian Holmes called for that. So Mizzou begins inside their own 10. We're under a minute and a half to go. The Tigers are going to improve to 1-1. One one. They win their 2016 home opener. They actually lost a season opener last week to West Virginia. First time in 14 years they lost a season opener. Now many yeah, that times, was a tough way to open. Yeah, I was going to say no many doubt. times they don't open a season against the team the caliber of West Virginia right. on the road. On the road, exactly. But in this day and age, with scheduling, with the way the playoffs are set up, you know, you're going to see more of those type of games. Barry Odom is going to win his home debut as head coach. He's He's lost his debut but Gary Pinkle lost his debut as Mizzou coach in 2001 to Bowling Green and the head coach before that Larry Smith he lost to Tulsa in his head coaching debut for the Tigers. By the way I read a great article this week that coach Pinkle's doing extremely well and adjusting to his retirement he, he's still working for the university he's here tonight entertaining alumni and uh, kind of running through the suites upstairs and you see that uh, 
That's what he did when he was here in his 15 years when they joined the SEC. Stumbled.